The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. It is fun, sun, and savings time at Standard Heating and Air with incredible savings on AC units, heat pumps, and combo deals this month to ensure your air quality is up to snuff this summer. Go to standardheating.com for more info or to schedule your appointment today. The 93X half ass Morning Show. 93 Look at me, sure. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. I think he let us go tubing on that thing. It's five hours. You just sit in the back of it. Be, 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 be. No one can talk. It's just chaos. I mean, stuff is flying everywhere. I'm sore for a month. Just like, is that from the boat? It's just the Wild West. Everybody drives as fast as they want. There's only sudden turns made out there. Everybody driving the boat is either drunk or 11. No one's a normal person. The orcas are at it again. If you haven't seen it, the orcas, killer whales, are out here sinking yachts. They just ramming the yachts until they sink. Who would have thought that the orcas would be the ones to step up? Rich people just be rich in our faces all the time on land. And then they went into the water and the orcas were like, not my hood, dog. I wish orcas had thumbs so bad just because I would just want them to throw up gang size with their fans. This is going to be good. Okay, let's go have some fun. Celebrate good times. Come on. Oh, yeah, get yourselves settled in, I guess. We're going to be here for a while. Just getting started here with a fresh week of broadcasts on the 93X half Fast Morning Show. Just getting started. It sounds a little overwhelming, but the good news is it's an F-off week. It's our latest F-off week. After this set of shows, uh, we'll be taking a week away for Independence Day. Friday, we'll be kicking off our vacation with our big fat ass uh, boat party this that's, Friday. That's good uh, because you know every year. By the way, Josh has entered the chat. <laughs> every year, I lose my voice after one of those things. Yeah, you do. You can't so shut up. I need. I know. I need a day or two. <laughs> you talk nonstop, and it's amazing to witness. Uh, you know, it's fun. Uh, and then, uh, you know, somebody's like, uh, obviously wants to get out of the conversation, but I, I, I'll miss him. So, and I, I know I might not have another opportunity to talk to him for a while, so I'll, I'll throw something else out there. And they're like, all right, I guess I'll uh, stick around and talk to this guy for a little bit. <laughs> Does hey. he stand there looking at their empty beer like, oh, God, I could use a new one, but he's still going. Sometimes they're like, hey, didn't you bring your family? Do you want to check in? <laughs> hey, there, there's one of your best friends standing over there. Really wish I could go talk to someone else right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, really, I came here to see Nick. Why am I wasting my time with this guy? People at times, Josh, need to use the bathroom. You should keep that in mind as well. <laughs> Maybe no, you should. I'll follow him. Oh, I'll, I might as well try, too. Just, Let's go, buddy. You keep talking in their yeah. ear as they're taking a whiz. Maybe you should be on that television show, My Strange Addiction, because I think you have some sort of an addiction to communicating with people <laughs> at um, uh, social events. You know what it could be? You know, you know, like those losers, they never go out, they never do anything, they never interact with people outside of their family? You're describing some of my best friends. And me. Yeah. <laughs> you. I'm that guy. Yeah. Well, don't hurt yourself on Friday. We all know how you can get. You feel obligated to talk to every swing and D that walks on the boat. I enjoy it. Like you were just explaining, to the point where they end up hating you. Yeah, that's usually um, how it goes. Because you won't leave them alone. Don't hurt yourself on Friday. Maybe make an effort to keep the conversations more brief. And, you know, there's no need for you to be walking around on your first three days of vacation and you can't talk. <laughs> you know, what I should do is... Uh, your when voice is gone again. When our, our boss first started here, you know, we're lucky. We're not kissing butt. We love our boss. He's the best boss we've ever had. You know what I love the most about him? We can control him? <laughs> well, that's not what I love the most about oh. him, but that is certainly something to love about him. What I love the most about him? Never see him. That is pretty cool, isn't maybe it? Once, is yeah. Maybe once a month we see the guy. At, well, it used to be we'd see him every day. You know how it is. You got to make a good first impression, and after a while, he he damn near runs this entire company, so he can show up whenever he wants. He's like a big wig now, even more so than when he started. I feel like if you see the boss, something went wrong. Oh well, yeah. If he's here early, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. something went wrong. Yeah. You're like, uh oh, what's he doing? You know what? That's a good point. What were you going to say about the prick? Do you guys remember? So he and I joked because we'd get going. He's he's very similar uh, in the way that. Um, well, you know, maybe, I don't know. Sometimes he seems like he wants out of a conversation. Other times he'll talk forever. 
We joked about getting a little hourglass, where if I walked in there, he'd flip it over. And as soon as the last sand passed through the middle there, <laughs> that grain, as oh, soon as yeah. it made it to the bottom, mm -hmm. I got to get out. Yep. Well, it'll be something on Friday. But we got to get there first. This is the last week where you could win your way onto our Independence Day booze cruise. So be listening. Thank you to Stillwater Riverboats. The gimmick is sponsored by Warner's Dock and Maplewood Auto Mall. This will be your last week. Wonderful brother and sisterhood, our, our listening audience. Your last chance. Be listening. Hell, we got a four-pack of tickets today to dump on somebody. So, uh, I'll be damned. It always seems to uh, sneak up on us. Suddenly, we're just a few days away from the cruise and then some time to lay around the house sleep in and do jack squat for a while love the f off weeks yeah those are good mm -hmm. these, these good are good times i like that because there's never a day you come in here unmotivated there's never a day if you're listening to friday show you know i had to motivate nick by taking the majority of my clothes off that was, right. hot, that was hot stuff i got into my sex outfit which <laughs> included my uh t-shirt well, I still have my boxers on. That's the only difference between uh, my usual sex outfit. My shoes, socks, all that's still on. Right. Is the oh, Simpson hey. shirt specifically part of your sex outfit or just any T-shirt in general? I happen to be wearing it. Yeah, okay. any any T-shirt. Uh, angry postal worker, she says, yes, I'm sorry I missed you. I was sick on our fall booze cruise. I had COVID that tried to kill me. So we had uh, we had one, the infect the river, the 4th of July one. I, I don't think that was last year. Maybe it was the previous year where... Uh, Everyone got sick mm -hmm. afterwards. I got sick before. I was almost patient zero on the last one. I'm trying to remember um, all of these cruises you're talking about. We've had a couple three here lately. You missed one? I missed the fall one. Mm -hmm. And it sucks because I, so I was looking ahead at the band, at, um, at the band set list, right? Because they said maybe we could get on stage with them. Right. So what I did is I learned... The majority of the songs they play. Jesus. And then, you know, when they'd be like, hey, uh, you guys want to come off? I'd be like, well, I haven't even picked up a guitar. <laughs> so I have no idea what song to play. I mean, I really don't want to. I could give it a shot. I, I, I've heard the song. Maybe let's see. And then I hopefully nail the solo or something like that. Sure. And then uh, go down. And it's like, wow, that guy, hey, he's okay. So I wasted all this time to get COVID. Yeah, we've had a couple of uh, cruises in the past where I got a kick out of the fact that we got to nickname it the Infect the River <laughs> Boat Party. <laughs> Whenever that was a couple of years ago, every, everybody on the boat got sick. <laughs> everybody missed work the following week. Hopefully we have nothing like that this year. But uh, like I said, be listening for your chance to jump on that pig. Yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully it doesn't take anybody out like some previous ones. What, I'm sure it'll be fine. What was with the intro was talking something about orcas? Or, or, yeah. The, the big black and white killer whales? What, yeah. what about them? What, what, you are, you are, haven't are heard there, all those stories? Are there orcas in the St. Croix? Is there something no. that... Because, yeah, that, tons that, of them. What, what's the problem? Revenge. What's the problem with the orcas? I don't know. They're getting pissed at boats lately, and they keep taking them down. It's well, insane. He's asking why. Well, it's funny. I Wapple told, So Wapple's taking over the intros, right? Yeah, I can Down tell. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, hey, it's boat related. And I'm like, oh, because of the booze cruise on Friday. He said, yes. And then it was all orcas. <laughs> Do you know what he's talking about? No, I didn't really. I understand. Oh, oh I, yes, I understand the story he's telling. Oh, I've, we've heard about those orcas that are all pissed off and going mm -hmm. after boats and stuff. But I didn't get the connection to the St. Croix. And I thought maybe, or I guess the, I missed the one on the Mississippi, right? Because the fall one's on the Mississippi. So maybe there was an Dude, orca was attack tons. that nobody told me about. Wouldn't yeah, there was be, a lot. Uh, we would probably make the papers, um, <laughs> I would imagine, if on our cruise Friday uh, we're capsized by a river orca. Uh, I, would, I would love to be part of something like that. But, but really, honestly, fill me in. I don't, I don't watch a lot of television news, and, and you guys are always masturbating on social media, uh, so I miss whatever stories uh, come from there. What's happening? There are killer whales where? Doing what? They literally take down, like, fishing boats and stuff like that. Boats will be fishing in the water, and then all of a sudden, like, 
or or orca whales will come up and take down the boat. And this is new? They, 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 they never behave like this before? It's relatively new. I guess I can't say if it's been years or what, but so they're trying to figure out, well, what's going on? And they think maybe what happened was there was an, uh, like a popular, like the Elvis of orcas maybe was killed by a boat. And so all his fans, <laughs> oh, it'd be, be Taylor Swift would have been better. <laughs> yeah, that would. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then all the Swifties are going after these boats. Okay. A few. Well, I, keep me posted on this. I hadn't heard any stories of the uh, killer orcas capsizing. Uh, is that how orcas, is that uh, their social makeup? Do they have one leader? And then if that leader dies, they do you know anything about the habits of the... Yeah, I'm not I'm sure. I'm not really an expert yeah. on orcas. But they, it sounded like you were for a second, to be honest. <laughs> you you kind of were painting yourself out to be one there yeah. for a while. Now you I'm had nervous. a bit of an attitude about it. Andrew Wapple, orca enthusiast. <laughs> Here's the problem orca that, expert. that I face if if there's some uh, river orcas there on the St. Croix. My guillot is too scrumptious for an orca to ignore. I think I'd be the main target of these guys, don't you think? Did you just say the word guillot? I did. He did. Guillot. What, what is that? Uh, it means like butt. <laughs> I'm trying to throw out some young people terms. Okay. Yeah. Man, I, that's a new one to me. Yeah. Oh, you've never heard Giat? No. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, Damn, oh. he's got a nice Oh, yeah, oh okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> you've dumped that on us before. Giat. Yeah. Okay. I didn't recognize it the way you used it. Oh, I'm God. trying to change my image a little bit. You're trying to change oh, your yeah. image. Be like, hip and with, with it. That. You know what it is. Guys that are 49 should be speaking in the vernacular of middle schoolers. That's <laughs> kind of what really draws people into their personality. Well, it, it got it got Betty White a lot of attention in the 10 years prior to her death. Oh, yeah, true. that's true. Mm-hmm. She's, mm-hmm. That became her go-to yeah. gimmick, as you know very well. She acts younger than 100 years old, you know, yep. when she was approaching when she passed. All she had to do was say, hey, bitches, it's me, Betty White. And you could see her on Jimmy Fallon, uh, Jimmy, uh, what's the other guy? <laughs> Kimmel. Kimmel. There's uh, a lot okay. of Jimmys with Love late her. night. Do you want to hear uh, anything about my weekend? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Did you throw out a first pitch at all? Got rained out. Ah, no, that was one of them. That was a damn shame because uh, Randy Shaver and I were all set to head out to Maple Lake, um, and it was going to be another wonderful charity event to benefit the Randy Shaver Cancer Research Foundation uh, with some town ball baseball games, and Randy and I were going to go out there and throw out a first pitch and have a couple of beers and help raise some money. I want my money back. I donated. <laughs> you can uh, talk to chair. I think at 7.30, Randy will be joining us. You can talk to him about getting that refund. Um, unfortunately, it just it, it pissed all night Friday night, and I got an email from the dude running things out there, a fellow by the name of Ryan Grams, in the email on Saturday morning said, we had to call it. I was wondering if the field would be The field was wet. underwater. Yeah. Ah. Uh, that sucks. They're hoping they can... Do it next year. So that was a letdown because I was looking forward to going out there and seeing some folks. Uh, Friday night, I did spend a little bit of time with the hardcore legend Mick Foley again. He made an appearance. Wapo, why didn't you go? I don't know. I was expecting my phone to ring. Yeah, I was going to, and I'm like, "Ah, I'm tired. I'm just going to go. I I can't believe you didn't go. Honestly, I thought for sure you'd be there. I text Wapo. I'm like, well, how was it? And he never made it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe you did go. Pardon me? Maybe he did go because uh, my stepson's girlfriend, she texted me a video of Wapple from Saturday night, <laughs> drunk and doing some karaoke. And she said, yeah, I, I talked to Wapple for a while, but I bet he doesn't remember. And Wapple did not remember whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> Got a little hammer. Awesome. Yeah, it Good was the you. birthday weekend. And I really went for it. Oh, right. It was your birthday. La- what was it? Last Friday? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. maybe you got so drunk you forgot you hung out with Cactus Jack. Bang, bang. <laughs> oh, was it that? Was it that wild of a weekend? Did you get somebody to spit on it. So Friday night, uh, if you were listening last week, you know we had Mick Foley on the radio, uh, and he had an appearance at Ridgedale Mall in Minnetonka at a place called Fan HQ. Our buddy Sean runs that joint, um, and I ran out there to see Mick Foley real quick. We were able. To, we were able to talk. Briefly. Did you tell him, hey, I'm the gentleman you've been texting with late at night? Uh, yeah, <laughs> sort of. You yeah, guys have developed a bit of a text relationship. Mick and I are pretty tight. 
Uh, and he thanked us for the su- for supporting his event. And, oh, he and, was awesome on Friday because c- he's a wonderful guy. Was yeah. that was that on Friday? Thursday. Thursday. It was on, yeah Thursday. So wonderful guy. Big crowd came out to see. Uh, Dude, love mankind. Cactus Jack. Bang, bang. Mick Foley. <laughs> Met some listeners. Oh, cool. Uh, Any Jesus or Jesus names we might recognize? Ah, uh, none that I. If they said it, I don't remember. I apologize. Uh, and then me and the friggin' wife went out and had something or another to eat. Uh, Saturday, the damn Maple Lake thing got uh, rained out, as I mentioned. Yesterday, um, boy, it had been a long time since I'd strolled into uh, what they call Canterbury Park. Oh, fun. Oh, wow. Many, many years since I had gone down to Canterbury. I still call it Canterbury Downs, and people holler (laughs) at me. Uh, Now they changed the name. I, I go there for, like, shows. Uh, and by shows, I don't mean concerts like, you know, like the uh, golf. Well, I don't, not the golf show. There's a golf. I, I only go there if I have to. Something like that or like that, that turkey classic we went oh, to. Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. Things I like love that. that. So, but did you go to like bet on some ponies? No. Well, no. Um, I went there because a friend of mine uh, had their dog signed up for the Basset Hound races. Oh, I love when they do that kind of stuff. That I, sounds like so much fun. I've seen the ostrich races. That's fun. It was a hell of a lot of fun. Um, How'd they do? Dead last. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> hey, if you're not first, you're last. So it doesn't matter where they came in. Yeah. But it was, it was. you know what? I hadn't been there in a long time. That place is so massive. Mm-hmm. So massive. And every corner of that friggin' joint was filled with people yesterday it was just insane it gets packed Uh, again it just kind of struck me because it had been a long time since i've been down there how how effing popular the joint is it was just crazy not only with the basset hounds but just the regular horse races Mm. you got folks playing cards yeah my my stepson goes he plays cards there a lot they got like a friggin jungle gym Uh, anyway (laughs) it was really nice out yesterday too so yeah it was probably didn't help the first nice day right of course you know Mm -hmm. the first nice day in what a week Mm -hmm. so everybody's out and about but anyway so the the dog i was there to see shelby she came in dead last in her heat can you by the you know i've never asked this can you bet on that uh (laughs) no no okay so there's no betting on side Ah. wagers sure but they didn't have anything like (laughs) electronically set up for so she came in last but it was still a lot of fun i mean i love my old uh dachshund ozzy the oz man um he used to run in the dachshund races in yz uh during our town party jj hill days so I was familiar with the dog racing um, world. The second heat, that was when the enter. So Shelby went in the first heat. She dead last. We were all very disappointed. <laughs> I let her know how disappointed I was when I saw her coming off yeah, the track. Yeah. Uh, the second heat was the race you wanted to see, Josh. Ready, set, go. A couple of these basset hounds, I mean, were just bred for this. Just boom, they out the gate and they're at the finish line, right? You got like two or three, which are friggin' professionals and, and possibly could be accused of doping or something. <laughs> there's no way a, do- a basset hound should be that friggin' fast. But then there's the, uh, you know, the, the four or five others who really don't know what they're doing out there. And that, that's when the fun really kicks in. One dog was dead last from the, from the jump, got about halfway down the track, and stopped to eat another dog's feces <laughs> oh yeah you love to see no it and way. that's that got the biggest pop of the afternoon out that's there. awesome and she did not hurry through the process of eating another dog's feces oh, yeah. <laughs> take your time to enjoy and uh then she slowly kind of uh, waddled to the finish that was the highlight of the day for me that was <laughs> fun a lot of fun that is fun. When you're saying that something kind of went crazy in the second heat, I was thinking, okay, it's either going to be poop or humping related. Oh, I never even could say. I, had, I was curious as to what it would be. I never came up with that. So speaking they, of something. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no. There you go. Um, go right ahead, Cubby. I was going to say, speaking of something to eat, I, I brought you guys in uh, treats. Um, you did? Yeah. What's that about? I got you some uh, donuts, those Hostess donuts. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then a uh, big, huge box, and then some uh, 
those little bite muffin things you guys were talking about. Well, You're talking those. about the muffin man? That's exactly about the correct. Muffin man? So somebody went to uh, Carl's uh, Big Fat Grocery. What do they call that place again? Well, you're thinking Costco, Costco where I'm an yeah. executive <laughs> member. Yes. <laughs> I don't like bringing that up because it makes me seem mm, too fancy, right, as an executive <laughs> member. But I realized over the weekend, Nick, that um, I'm a man of the people. And I have humble oh, yeah. upbringings just like you. You always uh, have been. Impoverished household, both of us. So yes. I, uh, I also joined um, Sam's Club. Oh, I welcome. am a Sam's Club member, a.k.a. one of the people. I don't want to forget my roots, you know, as an executive member of Costco for almost a year. So I was at Sam's Club, and I bought these guys for you. You're now a member at both of those big, giant joints? I am. Wow. What, what do you? I don't really know the difference between the two. There's a difference. Uh, there is? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, man. Here That's fun. Here we go. <laughs> that is fun. You know, the ignorant are fun to be around sometimes. <laughs> what makes you want to belong to two separate massive joints like that? I, I, don't even know, I don't even know the word to describe them. Well, Grocery as I said, stores. I'm a man of the people, so what? I decided mm-hmm. I'd join uh, Sam's Club. But the, re- the real reason is that... Um, I would have to uh, go one minute further to get gas at Costco, <laughs> so I decided uh, it's a little more convenient to go to Sam's Club and save myself that one minute every couple of weeks. I don't have to turn left. <laughs> it is a left. Yep, I don't have to turn left. I can just take a right. That's the way I got to go anyways. Yep. yep. Wow. Why don't I just take a right? Maybe your new addiction is shopping. No, I don't like shopping at all. But uh, you belong to two separate, uh, again, I don't know how to describe those places. What do you, you don't call it a grocery store. No, what do, you, what do they call that? I don't a even super know. store? Uh, there's yeah. a name for it. I can't remember. You're a two time member of the, uh, that's uh, okay. Well, yeah, so well I brought, thank you for bringing in the, the snacks. Of course. Yeah, you guys saw that, and I thought, you know what? My coworkers could use something like this. How many that's donuts cool, yeah. are in one giant? See, that's the thing about these places. You can't just get a sleeve of donuts. You have to buy six years' worth of the stuff. There's 32 packs. Oh, oh okay. Wow. And it looks like each one. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, it looks like there's three donuts in each pack. Oh, well, that's a hell of a, a take. Yeah. You got wow. your powdered. You got your chocolate frosted. You got your little bites. Wholesale club. Thank you. Thank oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. Wholesale you, brother club. Brother and sisterhood. Yes, well, wholesale. We appreciate that because I don't know how to refer. I, I, I try to steer clear of places like that. Yeah, I was thinking like big box store almost. You yeah, know? you could probably throw that out there. Uh, Dana's mom could be described as <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. I love your mom jokes. My mom's been targeted forever. I thought about just going after my own mom, but that seemed incestuous and gross. Yeah, so true. I did, uh, Wapple's mom doesn't like it. Dana, she uh, takes it like a champ. And I didn't even mean, <laughs> oh, I didn't even mean that dirty. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, thanks. And, uh, boy, you've, uh, you've just become that guy. It's nice of you to give back to the little people, Josh. Yeah, well, like I said, I'm a man of the people, and I almost <laughs> forgot my roots as an executive member of Costco. So who's got the better rotisserie chicken? I always hear great things about the Costco rotisserie chicken. Oh, I didn't uh, I didn't even know they had those. Waffle yeah, Wits. I missed it. 99 or something. It's Waffle. great deal. I'll be honest, wow, I go there like once deal. a month. Uh-huh. Not our field of expertise. We are more like orca enthusiasts. <laughs> <laughs> That's what. That, that's the kind of thing we follow. We don't know nothing about rotisserie chicken. We got other things going on. We're studying the paths of the orcas. <laughs> got it. And why they're so pissed off at boats. You're going to get eaten it. by a pot of orcas on the St. Croix, Wapple. <laughs> what if 25 years ago, honored. Josh, I would have said, I could see you someday being a member at two separate wholesale. What was the term? I forgot it already. Wholesale yeah. clubs? What if I went 25 years ago, I said, you know, someday, you boring bastard, you're going to become a member at two separate wholesale clubs. You would have said, F you, pal. No, you know, what's funny, I, do you remember, uh, this was so, I was probably 24 years old, I'd be like, hey, I was listening to WCCO on the way in, and you kept asking me, or telling me the youngest WCCO <laughs> listener of all time. That is true. 40 you would, years. <laughs> yeah, you would ask me, are you in your 50s? And I, I'm close. That is I'm, true. I did used to bust your chops about listening to WCCO on your way into work. Yeah. So I guess this always has been you. Yeah, it's pretty much always how it's has been. been you. 
Uh, well, delivery driver Jesus, uh, Jesus, excuse me, said, oh, did you show up to work in your new Tesla? No, it's silly. We call it a cyber truck. Those of us that own cyber truck. Actually, I saw a cyber truck yesterday. Oh, did you really? I don't get it. That's the first one I've seen. They're, they're kind they're, of goofy looking. They're sillier in person. No offense if you own a cyber truck. I mean, I guess you wouldn't take offense because you're uh, in a quite a bigger tax bracket than I am. Yeah. But I saw one of those yesterday and thought, that's uh, that's an odd-looking vehicle, even more so than when you see it in pictures. Um, One time, what was it? I forgot where I was. I think Hot Pot in Maplewood, and they had those robotic servers. It was insane. I don't know the words that are coming out of your mouth. They, they It's basically like a Roomba, and it brings you your food. Your dinner? Mm. Yeah. Oh, oh It's okay. insane. I was freaked out by it. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm a little freaked out uh, by the idea myself. You went to a restaurant where robots served you dinner was a probably yes. a more abbreviated way to say that. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, have you, anyone else had that experience? No. no. All right. That sounds kind of cool. Oh, wow. F me running. All right. Here's the deal. A couple of questions about our cruise on Friday. You know, we love the questions about the cruise. We love your, your interest in uh, what's going on Friday. Is there a band on the cruise Friday? No. Uh, next question. Will there be karaoke on the boat? No. Total silence. <laughs> <laughs> We're Perfect. going for total silence. You know what? Uh, you joke, but the two of us would probably like that. That music is too loud at this point. It is. I don't need it to be that loud. We don't support loud music anymore. We don't support loud anything. Um, and if I remember right, I think last year... You know, I think we had, someone had a boombox going in the background, but it was at a reasonable level, and every table was able to talk amongst themselves without shouting. That, you have to understand, this is where we're at now. This is where, don't come at us with the screaming and yelling and the hard drinking and the party, and this boat is for relaxation and quiet. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we're at these days. We're going to play Parcheesy. And I know some of you are going to say, well, 20 years ago, there was the strippers and a guy jumped off and a stabbing and there was a, a, oh. a, a death metal band. Yeah, but that was 20 years ago. Now we're looking for a relaxed crowd who wants to sit and just be calm. Yeah. Mind your own business. Right. That's what we're going for. I, I'm with you on that. And yep. I used to kind of feel... Like, uh, not necessarily, gu- well, a little guilty or like we were letting somebody down if they're expecting that. But now I just think they're doing it wrong. You're doing and, it wrong. And I want to show you what it can be like when things are at a reasonable <laughs> volume. You don't have to talk right. too loud. Right. You drink responsibly. I know in our, you know, what, what, what do you call those in the business? In our, uh, what do you call the stuff that happens between songs? Like a promo? What do you call that stuff? Like a bumper? What's the radio term? Well, yeah, drop, drop. Yeah, there's all that. They, they, Everything you said is correct. People cuss and say, you know, uh, you know rocky things like I'm rocking and uh, we'll rock and we, we party. That, that That's all for show. Uh, <laughs> and we're going to prove that on our cruise on Friday. This is going to be a mellow, act, uh, you know, low key. That's our thing nowadays. I, I've, I've, I don't know if I've ever told you guys this before, but I've been in talks with uh, Mary Berner, the uh, biggest boss in this company. I've asked to change the name because I think X is too aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> what about like a nice H or yes. a Y? Yes. 93 Y. 93 oh, Y? Because some people why? do ask that. Like, why do you call yourself a rock station? You don't play any rock. No karaoke, no band, just mellow vibes Friday. And uh, this is your last week to uh, win your way. And boy, you're, you're, you're reaching for your telephone now, I bet. Uh, <laughs> 3S. S is kind of a a soft, gentle, it it sounds like X. Listen to this, Josh. Again, I was struggling for the term, but like if we ran a drop, 93S. Yeah. Doesn't that sound soothing? Exactly. The S is for soothing. The guy like falls asleep as he's doing the drop. Right. (laughs) Oh, I got a better idea. Listen to this. 93L. L. It's just L is for love. It is for love. Yeah. (laughs) L. Which yeah. sounds better, S or L? Well, so uh, the young people, don't they use L for, like, loser? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Get that okay. L. Okay. Yeah, you get that L. That's what they say that, right? Mm-hmm. Or uh, L in the conversation. I can't remember. There's something else that the kids are saying now. But, yeah, I think S would be nice. And then what else we should do is we should have the DJs. Because I did used to hate this uh, growing up where the DJs would talk over the music, right? Yeah. Because back then we were using our tape players to record our favorite songs. Oh, yeah. It's I'm trying to record, uh, you know, uh, 
look what the cat dragged in by poison. Right. Right. And uh, Dirty Steve or something like that's talking over it. But uh, what, we should do it like, uh, you know, the classical music stations where the song ends and five or six seconds later they come in as if they're talking on the side of a golf course. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. A little pause, yeah. a little downtime, a little silence. Never hurt anybody. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, we'll get you. We'll get someone on the booze cruise. Randy Shaver, Brad Ryder here at about seven thirty. We got the stupid news coming up. You're a terrific crowd. We'll be back in a couple minutes here on the Half Ass Morning Show. The ninety three X Half Ass Morning Show. Are you ready to beat the heat this summer? Standard Heating and Air Conditioning is here to help you say goodbye to sweltering heat and hello to ultimate comfort. Ashley, what specials do they have going on this month? It is fun, sun, and savings time at Standard Heating and Air with incredible savings on AC units, heat pumps, and combo deals this month to ensure your air quality is up to snuff this summer. Go to standardheating.com for more info or to schedule your appointment today. This episode brought to you by Progressive. Whether you're driving, cooking, or doing laundry, Progressive knows the podcasts you listen to go best when they're bundled with another activity. Much like how their Progressive home and auto policies go best when they're bundled. Having these two policies together makes taking care of your insurance easier and could help you save too. Customers who save by switching their home and car insurance to Progressive save over $775 on average. That's a whole lot of savings and protection for your favorite podcast listening activities, like going on a road trip, cooking dinner, and even hitting the home gym. Yep, your home and your car are even easier to protect when you bundle your insurance together. Find your perfect combo. Get a home and car insurance quote at Progressive.com today. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings of $779 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2022 and May 2023. Potential savings will vary. Not available in all states. Stupid news on the Half-Assed Morning Show. All right, welcome back. We were talking a few minutes ago about how to soften up our image around here. For one, just to let folks know what to expect at our Independence Day boat cruise coming up this Friday. I mean, we've changed. And maybe some of you aren't aware of that. It's not 1999 anymore. And if you noticed... Josh, I even replaced booze cruise with boat cruise. Did you notice that? Oh, I didn't even notice. You know why? Because I'm right there with you. <laughs> We'd prefer it. We, we would prefer it if nobody got intoxicated on the cruise. And, and here's why. Drunk people tend to get loud. And we're not looking for loud things on the boat. I got some text messages this morning. Is there going to be live music? Hell no. Way too loud. Is there going to be a karaoke uh, setup? No. What about a DJ? I'm not sure about that, but if there is, we will ask the DJ to keep it at a reasonable level. It's Again, it's not 1999 anymore. I, I, I think it's time to grow up and act accordingly on our boat cruises. Josh, I think you even got a text message on the subject. And this is something we need to look into from Tiny Hammer Jesus. Let's just do the whole boat over Zoom. I like that. (laughs) (laughs) We could control the volume on our computers. Uh, I mean, no lines to the bathroom. uh You know, another thing, uh, don't don't dress provocatively. Come on, let's just keep this, let's keep this innocent. Yeah. Wear something just, you know, that's... uh, Sure. Wear your favorite shirt. Well, you'll have to talk to Janelle. Well, there's some exceptions. Because I saw what she's planning on wearing to that damn thing, and wah, wah, we will. Yeah. <laughs> Everything reasonable. Just dress comfortably. Mature, yes. That's what we're going for. I don't want to hear any bitching. This is just, this is how it is now. No random hookups either. St- no, that, that is no. unallowed. <laughs> random, you mean like that leads to sexual activity? Ex- oh. oh. God. I, I didn't yes. mean, I'm sorry, I'm yeah. sorry. Can we I, use I a different word? How about intimacy? intimacy? Can we say intimacy? So now you know. Now you know. You know that tiny hammer Jesus, that's so good. I mean, we should have thought of that over, over the pandemic. Zoom. <laughs> you know, if, that, if, if, if God forbid, fingers crossed it never does, but let's say there's another pandemic, let's have a Zoom boat cruise. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I would be in favor of such a thing. We're all just sitting in the comforts of our own home. Uh, the Snooze Cruise is the new name dumped on Friday's party from 
sim racing Jesus. That's perfect. Yeah, a bunch of cots set up. We all get a nap in. That'd be wonderful. Well, I mean, we don't have to sleep, but, you know, just keep it. This is great. Uh, HVAC Jesus. What is this? Where is he? Here he is. HVAC Jesus. What are you from 1952? Here's his question. Will Ashley be in a swimsuit? <laughs> a swimsuit? <No. laughs> as long as it's one of those that's like a, a full shirt, uh, like a, maybe yeah. a tank top with shorts that go down above her knees. Uh, Let's also do it an hour. Three hours is too long to stand. I'm Don't down with that. Yeah. Don't you agree? Yep. Plus well, wait, what, what, what are you doing standing? Well, standing and uh, conversing with folks and moving around and oh, stuff like that. Oh, no, just take a seat. Coming uh, up. Night Blood Jesus, would it be awkward if my wife gave birth on the booze cruise? No. Uh, be a first. It, why, it, why it wouldn't would you, be a it first. It wouldn't be a first. No, no, no. Their babies have been born on the booze cruise before. Oh. They've been conceived and born. Would it be awkward? Yeah, yeah. I think awkward would be a good word for it. But not not for me. I've yeah. seen it before. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, I'll help you out. You I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm going to work from the top end down. I don't really want to witness it again, but if you need some <laughs> He's help, already... or, or night blood Jesus, if you need me to hold your hand through the process. I mean, a lot of people don't realize what a man goes through when a baby's born. It's it's exhausting. Painful. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. It's painful it's what diff- a man goes through when a woman gives birth to a baby. You know what I'm saying, Ashley. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So I'll hold your hand, night blood Jesus. So there you go. Now you know what to expect Friday. I don't want any arguments. <laughs> you know, some people uh, are saying, you know, this is real lame. I used to feel bad if somebody felt that way, right? I used to, and now I don't care. Don't care. <laughs> I Call don't us care. lame. That's fine. You'll enjoy yourself. And if you don't, wait 10 years and look back and think those guys were ahead of their time. They were right, <laughs> you'll, you'll say to yourself. Someday you'll be in the same, I was going to say boat. <laughs> same uh, line of thinking. Calling us lame. <laughs> oh, no, where'd this go? Uh, more anxiety than hair Jesus. Should I cover my tattoos? Yeah. I'm so, I mean, that was a really dumb question. Yes. <laughs> That's a good idea. Cover your tattoos. All right, here we go. Headlong into our stupid news report. And for starters, uh, let me catch you up on something here. Uh, if you remember a while back, we talked about the guy who beat and strangled his damn best friend to death because he believed his friend had summoned Bigfoot. If you remember that. Tell yeah, me if you that, do. That's what would be tough to forget. All right. He, Wait, Ashley, did it sound like you forgot? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't recall. Well, she likely wasn't here that day. Or she was sleeping. Yeah. Sometimes she sleeps. The man beat and strangled his best friend to death because he believed his friend had summoned Bigfoot. The update here, catching you up is uh, he's going off to prison for the rest of his completely bizarre, insane old life. He's going off to prison. There was a murder trial, and it's over. Larry Sanders is the fella's name, a 55-year-old. Don't you know? He's going bye-bye for life. It was back in 20 ad 22 when he killed his bro, a dude named Jimmy Knighton. Larry killed Jimmy while they was noodling in the river. Where you dive on down into the water. Most of you know what noodling is, I think, by now. Certainly. You dive down into the dirty water. You try and grab up a fish with your bare hands like, say, a catfish. You ram your arm into their yap and you haul them out. I guess bait and tackle has gone up in price or something. Um, Larry... He took the stand in his defense during his murder trial, and it was something to see. Being completely unhinged from reality, of course, he testified that he and Jimmy were in the river when he saw, in the distance, uh, Cubby, a 12-foot Bigfoot standing there downstream. That's what he saw. That would freak anybody out. According to Larry, when he and Jimmy were fishing... He, uh, he sees a 12-foot Bigfoot standing downstream, and he said that Jimmy, he thought Jimmy had summoned him. <laughs> I summon thee, Bigfoot. Larry was convinced that eventually Jimmy wanted to drown him and then feed him to Bigfoot. 
<laughs> That's what friends Larry... don't do that to friends. I haven't heard a story like that in years where a friend would do that to another. Haven't heard a story like that in years where they would drown their friend and then feed him to Bigfoot. But that's what Larry thought was coming. So Larry killed Jimmy. One of the lawyers involved in the case uh, said this here. He said, yes, there was a monster in the woods that night, but it wasn't Bigfoot. It was Larry. (laughs) He worked on that all night, I bet. Oh, yeah. And then you know what he did afterwards? He went... One of those guys that sniff after they deliver a line oh. that they just dominate. <laughs> I got a buddy like that. A move made famous by Don Knotts. Yeah. The legendary Don Knotts had that move nailed. When he said something that he thought was clever, <sighs> nailed it. Just for fun, who would you summon if you had the power to do so, Josh? Like a creature? Mm. Doesn't matter. Who would you summon the way uh, Jimmy... According to Larry, Larry thought that Jimmy was summoning Bigfoot. If you could summon anyone, anything. I miss Chris Farley. You do? But I don't oh, want an evil good. Chris Farley. Does it have to no, be No, 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 no. It doesn't have, to be, doesn't have to play along with this story. It can be good, evil, a fictional character, a real person. Just if you had the power to summon the... Right now, I'd say Chris Farley. Chris Farley. How about yourself? Is it Anna Nicole Smith? I think... Along those lines, I do. I think about a babe, a hot mama that I could summon. But also, maybe I do want to summon something for evil. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. It's fun. God dang. Bigfoot? No. I mean, what the hell can he do? Bigfoot's weak. Um, Let me think about that. Let me think about that. I mean, a mystical creature would be kind of cool. Um, I, I, well, there's one that I know how to summon. I've just never had the courage to do. Actually, there's two now that there's I think There's one about. that you do know how to summon. There's two. T- oh, tell me. There's two. Okay, do you, do you have a mirror? <laughs> I have a mirror? You have a mirror somewhere. Y- yes. Okay. Can you say the word Candyman three times <laughs> into that mirror? Or Bloody Mary? Or Biggie Smalls. The oh, Biggie, I've oh, never yeah. heard of Biggie Smalls. It's a South Park I, I'm, episode. I'm, yeah. I've heard of Biggie Smalls, but I didn't know you could do that. Uh huh. Boy, I think I'd go Candyman before Bloody Mary. I, I don't know. She freaks me out more. I'm thinking Hot Mamas. I'm thinking Dead Rock Stars that I loved. But you know what came oh. to mind uh, when I when I brought up the idea of summoning something for evil purposes? You know what character? I don't know if he'd call him a character. Did everyone see the Tom Cruise remake of The War of the Worlds? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. A great movie. Horrible ending. Oh, one of the worst. Anyway, if you don't know, if you don't know, check it out. One of the dumbest, most anticlimactic endings where I sat in the theater and I said to the girl I was with when it was over, I said, that's really how they're ending. <laughs> it's so stupid. Anyway. Those big, uh, those big sh- uh, walking uh, characters that came up from under the street. Where there's like a bassoon that plays and under the street. And then they yeah. went. Yeah. Oh, so good. And then they got out their laser thing and went. I, that, I, I want to summon that some bitch. I don't know where I'm going to send him. What? Yeah, I was going to ask you, what Minnesota town do you send uh, it to? <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet, but. When I saw that in the theater, I thought that was just the coolest spaceship, whatever you want to call the damn thing. That's who I'm summoning. I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet. I thought of another one I know how to summon, and I see texts are coming in on this too. And I, I'm going to change my answer. Beetlejuice. <laughs> well, Chris Farley and then Beetlejuice would be second for the comedy and the, uh, just like Chris Farley, the comedy, but the hijinks. Beetlejuice? Beetlejuice. Mm, yeah, Never saw it. Oh, so good. Never. I'm really surprised Nick didn't go Ronnie James Dio. Well, like I said, I was thinking of rock stars mm-hmm. and hot mamas. There's a lot, because then Eddie Van Halen comes to yeah, mind. Yeah, but have you, did you oh, see the, the War of the Worlds? You saw what that thing can do? Oh. Or, or you did? Oh. Yeah, you, so you saw it. Yeah, I did. Yep. <laughs> Maybe, can it, well, Josh wants to summon two beings, Chris Farley and Beetlejuice. I bet they'd get along. I'm going to go with the character, right, with the laser, and it wipes out uh, thousands of... And, and Ronnie James Dio is going to have a saddle on top of that sumbitch, yep. and oh, he's wow. riding it through town. Oh, fun. 
Fun well, fun. I guess you really <laughs> don't need to summon Ronnie James Dio because, you know, he's going to come back to life and save everyone uh, yeah, but, as it is. But, uh, but he's dragging it out at this point. Yeah. Don't you think? <laughs> I Nick's mean, in his 50s, Wapple. Let's get this going. <laughs> Trust me, Wapple. I was the first one to recognize the idea that Ronnie James Dio is immortal and one day he will come back and save planet Earth. But he's dragging it out at this point. I may yeah. have to summon the guy. I mean, he's testing the waters with the hologram that's going around playing concerts and stuff like that, but he'll be back. All right, wait, Do you this, think he saw, like, the pandemic, and he's like, ew, I don't want to go there yet. He just said, yeah, I'm going to wait. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, we got another great idea for the booze cruise. We're trying to improve this thing, you know, by keeping it quieter, having people dress more appropriately. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. we discussed a lot of things. I'd like to have a healthier menu, if we could. Mm. Um, if we could figure that out. Okay. You know, some fruits and vegetables. More uh, of these. Currently, I believe we have hot dogs and potato chips. You'd like to make a healthier uh, buffet. If we could. Yeah. Vegetables. Maybe uh, one of the decks could be purely yoga, something like that. I mean, these are some good ideas. Cheek Spreader Jesus recommends uh, that we try and uh, lower the speed of the boat. I agree. It goes too fast. Yeah. We don't need to go that fast. I'd say the boat doesn't even need to move. Just, just go stand on it for a little bit, then get off. You know, I like the movement for the change of scenery, but it doesn't need to go as fast as it goes. So that's a great idea. I'm cool idea. with that. I'm cool. We can drop the speed uh, a touch. A few people are texting in. The big killer machine. And here come the jokes, I'm sure. The big killer machine that wipes everyone out in the war of the worlds is called the tripod. Is that just, really what just it's so called? You, that's what they're telling me. It's just huh. a tripod. Yeah, makes sense. I, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. On the topic of who we would summon, if anybody or anything... Uh, one listener says they want to summon Bernie Mac. Oh, shoot. Oh, uh, he was if funny. you haven't watched the Bernie Mac show, you should try it. If you got kids especially, that is such a good show. Uh, you don't understand. I ain't scared of you mother effers. That's Bernie Mac line. Uh, will there be a sermon given on the boat? <laughs> a listener wants to know. Will well, there- you know, for some people, uh, religion is... Uh, the touchy subject. So yeah. we, let's avoid that. Oh, I'll be giving a sermon. Yeah. Are, are you going to be giving? I'm going to force it on people. <laughs> Can you throw in some politics? I love to force my politics and my religion on people. By God, I do. All right. You don't understand. Didn't you guys see him on what was that show when Bernie Mac first started in stand up comedy? What was that called? Deaf. Uh, Deaf. Uh, oh, yeah, the Kings of Comedy? Is that no, the- Deaf something. Deaf, Deaf comedy, comedy Jam? Jam? Deaf Comedy Jam. Yeah, yeah. You don't understand. I ain't scared of you, mother reference. All right. As I've said many times before during our stupid news reports, some folks just can't get right. They can't and they won't. And here's another story along those lines. In St. Louis County, Missouri, one of those can't get right type of dudes. Only one week after being released from jail for sex offenses, one week. After he got released for sex offenses, he's now been accused of taking his Johnson out his pants and having sex with a seat on a train. Oh, no, man. <laughs> Just ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, back and forth. Johnson out having sex with a chair or a seat on a train. Any port in a storm, they say, right? Mm. I don't know how you do something like that. I mean, I'll I show get, you. It's got to be, uh, I'll bet. It's got to probably, you know, the crease, right? Where the back meets the seat. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I suppose That's so. the only place I've been tempted to put mine. I <laughs> suppose that would be. The cops had to go ahead and toss a 38-year-old lunatic named D'Angelo Covington into the county jail for that. He kind of has a I'm crazy as F look, doesn't he? He doesn't look right. He's an odd-looking mm-hmm. dude. He looks like he can't get right. That's what he looks yeah, like. Yeah, he does. Uh, yeah, I'll- there's no hope. So they had to put him in jail for that, and I'll tell you this, he's no longer welcome to ride the train in town anymore if he he ever sees the light of day again. The train said, you're not welcome on the damn thing anymore. The folks who drive the city trains. They see some things. Man, I bet they're tired of penises and feces and drug pipes and knife fights. One of my bros is a train driver, and he... Does not enjoy it. Oh, no, I bet not. Tough job. For all of those reasons. Penises, feces, drug pipes, and knife fights. He's had it up to here with all of those 
items. So according to the story down there in St. Louis, the damn train driver, uh, the captain, the engineer, whatever he is, that poor bastard stopped the train for a smoke break or something, right? And he rounds a corner, and there's this Covington character, dong out, pumping on a chair like it was prom night. Ugh. I'd rather see a guy just straight up masturbating, wouldn't you? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Kinda. I suppose. It's less crazy. I, I'd be less scared. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and I don't blame the driver. He just let the guy pump. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. interfere with that. I'm not going to intervene on that one. Why try, why try breaking that up? It says here the driver continued on his route, and Dinkus, kept, the guy Covington, driver just put it back in drive and kept rolling down the tracks. Covington, he kept pumping his rod on the chair until he got to his stop. I don't know. Maybe I would... Uh... I, I mean, I'd be disgusted with myself, but maybe I'd talk dirty just to kind of speed things up because I wouldn't oh, want to watch it. No, anymore. you wouldn't oh. talk dirty. <laughs> I wouldn't. Yo, that's terrible. Oh, Josh, always trying just to help to out. Speed up the process. <laughs> yeah. I, I ran my car through the car wash yesterday, and my wife was in there, and I was talking dirty to the car wash, you know, just to kind of get things going. I see where you're going with that. So you'd say something like, "Oh hell yeah." <laughs> oh, no. Pump that spot. chair, son. Yeah, give it to me. Is that your yeah. rod? Give it to me. Is yeah. that a rod you got there? Okay. Uh, video surveillance caught everything, so the driver didn't need to, you know, he knew it was all on tape. The cops went and got him. Uh, dude wasn't done yet. This Covington was also arrested for assaulting a nurse at the jail. Oh, man. He can't get right, so I say, I say cut it off. This is all, again, a week after the bastard got out the cooler for multiple prior sex offenses. You don't even want to hear what he was there for. And a week later, he's got his rod on a chair. I say cut it off. Put his, him in the, uh, lock, lock him up. His mugshot is up on 93x.com. It's not good. It. It's not good to look at no, his mugshot. No, it's pretty darn gross. It does give me the, uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to screw a chair kind of vibe. <laughs> You know, I've got that look. Yeah, that's a hell of a vibe Sometimes, to give off. Yeah. <laughs> that guy uh, looks like he'd bang a bus or a train seat. <laughs> He's kind of got that look, doesn't he? Oh. Looks, he actually looks like a kid I grew up with. So it, Really? Oh, yeah, weird. <laughs> gives me a little bit of extra case of the willies. What else do I have here for you? A couple great ideas for the booze cruise. We're really trying to perfect this thing. I think we've got some good places to go. The snooze cruise. Yeah, that's fine. I'm okay yes, with that. Right. We want it mellowed out. We want it finally just completely mellowed out. Oh, you know, nap pods. We should have some nap oh. pods on. Oh. I never even... That's sweet. Th- th- nap? Nap pods. Pods. So mm-hmm. For the uh, snooze cruise. That'd be kind of nice, That'd wouldn't it? would be lovely. Uh, juicy Jerky Jesus. Uh, how about just one level for puzzles? <laughs> oh, I like puzzles. Oh, man, some people love to put together puzzles. My wife is a puzzler. Uh, she enjoys that. Um, question about the boat. Can we just all use our own boats on separate lakes? Yeah, that's <laughs> fine, too. <laughs> yeah, that just, works. Here's the thing, though. It, it's uh, The boat company is on the nuts. I mean, so 7 p.m. is when it uh, takes off back by 10. So if you want to join us on your own boat on a separate lake or river... Seven to ten. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. you got to be ready by seven. Otherwise, I'm sorry. We're going to have to take off without you. That's great. Maybe we could all just wear earbuds and listen to our favorite podcast at a reasonable volume. What do they call those? Silent parties? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you seen those? It's yes. ridiculous. Like a silent disco or something? Yeah, yeah. silent discos. Oh, have I you love seen that. those videos, Nick? No. So it's like a big rave nightclub. It's all dark and the lights are going crazy. And there's some uh, loud music, but it's in your headphones. So like you're dancing to the same music everybody else is. But if you're standing out there without headphones, it looks like a bunch of crazy people okay. yeah. just it looks dancing. So weird. You are listening to the same song. Yeah. But it's not blaring over speakers. It's just in your earphones. It's in your headphones, yeah. What are, what are we doing? <laughs> so just dead silence in the friggin' club, yeah. other than the sounds of feet shuffling and things like that. Yeah, can you imagine somebody, you go up to talk to someone and they just put their finger up like, hang on, uh, Joe Rogan's about to go to commercial. I just want to hear the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> Christ almighty. That sounds like a hell of a deal. Cross-stitching, NWO Jesus says. He'd like to do a little cross-stitching. Oh, that'd be lovely. Yeah, we should have an arts and craft tier. I mean, there's three levels yes. on that thing. Mm-hmm. We could do all kinds of things. Oh, what about Groob Cakes is texted in. How about we start bringing kids on the boat cruises? 
Well, That's where I draw the friggin' line, because kids are loud and gross and stupid. Uh-huh. I, kids are great, I think, but um, loud, right. We're trying to keep it a little, you know, reasonably quiet. That's where I draw the yeah. line. Kids are madness. No, no, no. You, group cakes. I, I see what you were trying to do there, but you're going the other way. Uh, kids cause problems. We don't want any problems, so. All right, someone ought to keep an eye on this here creepy bitch too. We just talked about the guy bone in a seat on the train. We're staying with the creepy vibe here. Keep an eye on this guy. This is a new angle on picking up girls. I haven't heard this one yet. From out there in Singapore. And I believe I've heard of them. In Singapore, you ready for this? A 31-year-old guy by the name of Tan. He's looking to meet ladies, but he's not sure how to go about it. You know, it's not easy, right? Of course. I, I wouldn't know how to do it anymore. I mean, not that I ever really knew how to do it back in the day, but it's been 20-some years for me. I never had to. They came to me. But, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yes, for, for some of you, it's difficult to meet ladies. <laughs> this dude, Tan, he's 31. He came up with a plan, and this is what he did. He wandered around where the babes were at, you know, like whatever, a mall or whatever. And when a woman would walk by, he squirted their clothes with a mixture of flour and his urine. Mm. Oh, boy. That's how you get him. So (laughs) he could have a reason to break the ice and talk to him. (laughs) Hey, you got some pee on you. (laughs) My pee. How you doing? My name's Tan. That's how he did it. Well, that's how dogs mark their territory, right? Yeah, I suppose. Just pee on whatever it is that's now yours. I mean, and hopefully, hopefully they didn't see him squirt his mixture of flour and urine out of, he's got a little squirt bottle, right? He squirts it on their clothes, and then he has a reason to walk up and say, uh, excuse me, ma'am, but you seem to have a stain on your, right? And then they go, oh, God, that's embarrassing. And he'd say, how you doing? I'm Tan. That was his, that was his plan. Weirdo. What do you mean? In what way? Yeah. <laughs> like sometimes you say these things, and I don't know where you're going with that. So he caught hell for this uh, from the cops. He was fined $1,200. He pleaded guilty to using criminal force on a woman. That's it? Yeah, that he was seems fi- very low. Like I said, keep an eye on this prick. Mm-hmm. Right. That's a dude that's going to escalate this. Oh. Because, you know, a lot of people... Well, Okay, let me rephrase that. <laughs> Someone else who is like-minded might just use water and flour. But he, he mm-hmm. used urine. Pee, yeah, his yeah, own. He, he's escalated the situation. So he operated like this once or twice. He followed a 26-year-old woman as she was going up an escalator. He squirted his pea flower mixture. <laughs> he squirted it on her, Ashley, from above. No. He, was, he was stalking her from an overhead bridge. She's on the escalator. <laughs> he gives her the pea flower. <laughs> But that smells bad. Oh, I bet it does. Good, yeah. And then he walks up and says, uh, hi, not trying to bother you, but it looks like you have something on your... He was looking to... This is what he told the cops. I was looking to create opportunities to talk to ladies. <laughs> yeah, there's no one in his life he could have asked advice to. <laughs> so how did you guys meet? Well, one day I decided to mix flour and urine in a square bottle and go to the mall <laughs> <laughs> that age old story <laughs> but like uh, josh said and i agree this dude is not gonna make it no way he makes it as a normal member of society okay so he's taken his medicine for now he paid a fine he'll be back in court someday no question oh yeah no question totally did agree. you see the photo of the guy yeah he looks like someone that would peer through your bedroom window while you take a dump. He looks, uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Why are you dumping in your bedroom? Peer through your bathroom window while you're, yeah, right. I poop in my bedroom. You do? Yeah. Again, establish dominance. Yeah. Then I make myself clean it up. I have multiple personalities. Bad boy, Josh. Double we'll D's. Yeah. Double D's. She's a set. If a man squirts that on me, I admit I'll have a few words for that man. Well, then. <laughs> Text us those words. I'd, be, I'd love to know. I would like to have a word with you. Yes, we've met Double D. She's she's feisty. I bet she'd have a good word. All right, one more quick one. Then we got to get out the way. Oh God, got a headache already. You really? Because I've been being, I've been too loud. 
Uh, I'm not practicing what I preach. We want quiet on our boat party Friday. We want quiet. We want relaxed people. And you know what? But There's... yet I'm here shouting into a microphone. I, I'm, I'm contradicting. I'm, I'm a fool. No, you're not a fool. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a jackass. You're just trying to project to make sure the people in the back can hear you. It sits on baby Jesus. What about a silent reading corner on our boat cruise this Friday? Yes. <laughs> oh, everybody brings a book. <laughs> Cribbage a tournament. Yeah, you know what? I'm into a, a couple of new series. We can talk about that, have a little book club. Equestrian Jesus. How about a cribbage tournament? No. You know, oh, cribbage. No. You know, people get a little worked up, don't they? They do. It's a lot of math. I mean, a lot of us like pegging. But cribbage, they do get a little worked up. I don't like cribbage because it involves arithmetic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My friends won't play cribbage with me because that's how badly I struggle with arithmetic. You well, have to sit there and count your fingers. Yes, I do. Yep. And, and and I don't blame my friends. But I love cribbage, but I can't play it. I can't do the 550. I can't. I have to go 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I, I have to. As long as he can keep his voice at an indoor talking level, we just have to invite Math Tutor Jesus. He'll sure. help out. Sure. Because I need all the help I can get. It's a damn shame, and I'm not exaggerating. That is how poorly I count, for Pete's <laughs> sake, at this point in my... Real quick. Okay. So much bizarre behavior in today's stupid uh, news report. So much bizarre behavior. See if you can wrap your head around. I, I feel funny just talking about some of this stuff. I do. Uh, try this one out. A Japanese fella who I guess also happens to be a famous pianist. He's a big pianist. Really? <laughs> He's been arrested for stealing a female flight attendant's apron while he was taking an airplane ride. You know, they might walk around with a apron when they're serving the drinks or the yeah. food, right? Okay. He stole a female flight attendant's apron while he was taking uh, one of those airplane rides. His name is Kazuya Saito. Kazuya Saito. 34 years old. I'm not sure how he got fingered for the crime, but when the cops asked him about snatching a gal's apron, he said, Collecting women's uniforms is my hobby. <laughs> oh, <laughs> disturbing. <laughs> what else does he have? He's not done yet. He's not done yet. Collecting women's uniforms is my hobby. I smelled it. And I wore it myself. Oh. <laughs> hey, dude. What's up with stealing that gal's apron? Collecting uniforms is my hobby. I smelled it and I wore it myself. <laughs> All right, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can, I, can I tell you something? Yes. I mean, I've never thought about this until right this moment. What's that now? If somebody, if somebody, uh, if somebody were to smell my clothes, yeah, I might think that was kind of cool. A stranger walks up to you on the street and takes a big whiff of your clothing. Well, I wasn't picturing me wearing it. Oh. Um. Like, a, it's, it's in a hamper somewhere. Oh. Uh, let's talk about uh, what you call fly honeys. Yes. Okay, yes. let's say there's a fly honey who yep. walks up to you and says, Your pants, I must smell them. <laughs> that is maybe more what you're talking about. You would, you would maybe like to hear that. Well, I'd like to know they did it in secret. Your pants! Yeah. Now she gets aggressive. Right. Now, now how do you react to that? I, well, I'd be scared, but maybe in a way that is titillating. What are you? Am I alone on this? Because now I wish I didn't bring it up. Uh, I've been I, I've been <laughs> smelled before, uh, Josh. Mm -hmm. I've been smelled before. I, well, I want to give you all the details, but I don't want to get thrown off the air. Well, Dana, has anyone ever smelled your panties? N <laughs> My panties specifically? Yeah. Yes. I've been smelled before, and at first I thought, "What are you doing?" And then I was kind of turned on by it. Can you tell us the area you were? By that, I mean on your body, not the location you, geographically. You, again, to use uh, your vernacular, you would refer to it as the bikini area. Really? Yes. Uh, are we talking about front or Oh, God help us. I think you know the answer to that. Well, I don't know. You hang out with some pretty <laughs> wild people. I, I do. Um, I do. Front. It, it was a front smelling. 
Can I ask you another thing? Yes! Was there... Your pants! Take them off! (laughs) Go ahead. Was there a a particular reason, like maybe you just got done running a 5K? No, 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 Okay, so it's not like she's like, oh, yeah, I like it when it's all worked up. No, that's terrible. Yeah. Right. It was just... It adds a level of concern. She just kind of... Kind of a thing, and I thought, what are you, some kind of... Oh, I see where you're going with that. Cool. Did you return the favor? (laughs) No. Really? No, gross. Yeah, you, you made a face <laughs> there. Back to this guy who swiped a gal's apron, and then he uh, smelled it, and he put it on his own body and walked around town. Um, he admitted to doing this kind of thing before. The cops found other aprons and nurse uniforms at his house. That's weird, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at what time it is. Sports on the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. And that one is gone. Lewis in his 16th game has just hit his 10th home run. And you can hear the MVP chance from behind the Twins dugout. The fastest twin ever to hit 10 home runs in a season. Yeah, he's still hitting dongs up and down, Royce Lewis. Impressive. Fun to watch. Yes, very impressive. The Twins uh, got what they wanted out of their starting pitching, for Christ's sake, the last couple days out there in Oakland. Uh, I'll take your word for it. That's fun to watch. Still can't watch. Sorry, I keep forgetting that. I keep forgetting that uh, so many folks are are hamstrung by that uh, Comcast or Xfinity or whatever the hell it is. I don't know what the, the details of the problem, but sorry. I don't mean to come off insensitive. I've been able to see the Twins, and they got two or three over the weekend in Oakland. Like I said, the starting pitching was great. Yesterday and Saturday, we can tell you more details on that uh, when Randy Shaver and Brad Ryder dive into the mix. Well, uh, we've been poking fun at the Stanley Cup uh, Finals uh, because it looked like it was over, and then, my God, just get it over with. Oh, now Edmonton's won one, now they've won two, now they've won three in a row. So now I guess we all got to watch tonight. Yeah. You got to watch. There's nothing that twins don't play tonight. You got to watch. Let's fall into line and see if. Something can be done tonight that hasn't been done in 80-some years. Again, more details on that in a half hour. I don't know what it's going to take to kill John Force. Uh, oh we'll we'll talk about what happened to John Force yesterday. Oh, He's, still He's still breathing. He's still breathing. We don't talk about NHRA on this program, but after yesterday, we got to have something or another to say about John Force. We'll take a break. Josh's News is coming up next. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Are you ready to beat the heat this summer? Standard Heating and Air Conditioning is here to help you say goodbye to sweltering heat and hello to ultimate comfort. Ashley, what specials do they have going on this month? It is fun, sun, and savings time at Standard Heating and Air with incredible savings on AC units, heat pumps, and combo deals this month to ensure your air quality is up to snuff this summer. Go to standardheating.com for more info or to schedule your appointment today. The Ed Milet Show showcases the greatest peak performers sharing their journey, knowledge, and thought leadership. The more you just kind of play with your ability to visualize, the more it becomes a muscle. It'll serve you. But I'm telling you, life is a whole lot better when you focus on what's going on inside of you as opposed to what's going on around you. And the more we just get internal, we begin to take some measure of control over the mental images we're feeding ourselves, the more we can produce a result that's in congruence with our goals. The Ed Milet Show is available on YouTube or wherever you listen. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. They got their heads up their ass. On 93X. Did you tell me there was no second sponsor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did I acknowledge it? And did I immediately forget? I think so. This is incredibly embarrassing. I think so. An order up. (laughs) (laughs) You guys are sitting there jaw We got an order. We got a customer waiting. So when she said 93X, I should have hit the clip? Yeah, yeah, Do it one more time, Ashley. That's your traffic. This is 93X. Something like this could have caused a lot of panic, and it could have made a lot of people anxious, but it also could have injured a lot of people. Wow, did Ashley screw that one up? (laughs) (laughs) A man was arrested after allegedly bringing Molotov cocktails and weapons to Regions Hospital Thursday. That's a little scary. St. Paul Police and Security requested police assistance around 9.30 a.m. after they had information suggesting a man who was talking with security inside the hospital might be in possession of Molotov cocktails. For anybody that doesn't know, Molotov cocktails are a combination of a flammable liquid with a rag that acts as a wick, and they can be very dangerous. Oh, it can give you gas, too, if you drink it. Pardon the pun. The officer (laughs) who was doing contract work at the hospital looked inside the car parked outside the doors and saw what appeared to be possible incendiary devices in a bucket. 
Police described those devices as individual containers with liquid inside and rags sticking out of the top. The off-duty officer called for assistance, and the man was taken into custody. There was Molotov cocktails, but also a crossbow. He did have an arrow in there for that crossbow. Oh, when he Christ. was pat-searched for weapons, he also had a large knife up his... What the hell? Oh, oh, no. oh dude. Dude. No, it, I, it, it, I played the wrong clip. This has not been a good start for me. I, I'm sorry, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Here's the right one. There was Molotov cocktails, but also a crossbow. He did have an arrow in there for that crossbow. When he was pat searched for weapons, he also had a large knife up his. Man, tell you not. Oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I can't get right this morning. I don't know what's going on. This is the right one. He was pat searched for weapons. He also had a large knife up his sleeve. That's what it was. Oh, oh, okay. The Ooh. disturbing incident. Sleeve of wizard. Ah, I wish I would have thought of that before. This disturbing incident remains under investigation. What was this guy's uh, plan? I don't know. He had some sort of agenda. And there he was just kind of jawjacking with folks at the hospital? Yeah, weird. <laughs> yeah. Why yeah. would he... I don't get it. Uh, BYOB, you know, bring your own bomb, I guess. I don't know, I thought he was having some sort of party. And he's got a crossbow? That's kind of cool. Yeah, uh, that's pretty badass. no. Actually, everything he had was kind of cool, but just, you know, you want that in a... That's somebody who's responsible and not going to do some damage at a hospital. That's what you So think. how's everyone doing here tonight? <laughs> He's just wandering around talking to folks. I got nothing. Uh, charges have been filed against the 35-year-old Little Canada man accused of peeping into the shower stall occupied by a 19-year-old woman on the U of M campus. The 35-year-old is the suspected peeper caught on the night of May 23rd after peering over the shower stall at Comstock Hall. I bet you a lot of peepers... Uh, grew up in Little Canada. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> I love Little Canada. I bet for you all a lot the of windows, yeah. yeah, for peeping. Yeah, she loves peepers. She's good peeping up in Little Canada. <laughs> I just, uh, I bet you that a lot of them come from Little Canada. University police posted an alert on their website and were able to use security camera footage to track how he entered the building. They then discovered an open window in an open dorm room on the ground floor of Comstock Hall. With the Did wind. he have a crossbow s- <laughs> slewn across his back? Yeah, he had three bolts in his pocket. Mm-hmm. The security video also showed the peeper's car arriving at the area shortly before the footage captured him, which led police to identify the creep and make the arrest. Friggin' window peepers. A Michigan state representative may have lived up to his last name after allegedly assaulting an exotic dancer and then chasing her while brandishing a gun, police said. Okay, so what would his... He may have lived up to his last name. Yep. He's chasing down a stripper with a gun in his hand? Allegedly so, yes. Uh, boy, what would his last name be? Uh, for some reason, I want to I want to turn this into a game. Is there any way I, I, that I would get it, Josh? Maybe. Uh, It'd be tough. His last name is Stripper Harassment. Nah. (laughs) No. What is it? Officers responded to reports of a possible shots fired about 2.45 a.m. Thursday after 62-year-old Neil Stripper Chase Gun Guy. Son of a bitch. I was going to say Stripper (laughs) Chase Gun Guy. Uh, You were close. Yeah. Neil Frisky allegedly chased the adult <laughs> dancer <laughs> Come on. after a disagreement. 2508, Frisky. That's possible. That's not, mis- that's, that's not frisky. <laughs> it's, uh, well, he got a little frisky, allegedly, and oh. uh, things went south, and he may or may not have, depending on who you ask, chased her with a gun. It's F-R-I-S-K-E. I'm going with frisky just for the point of the story. Mm. Why uh, wouldn't you? On the scene, law enforcement learned of a possible sexual assault of an adult female. But following the arrest, Frisky's re-election campaign made a post on Facebook calling the timing of his arrest highly suspect, drawing a connection that he'd been arrested, hmm, just before absentee ballots are released for the upcoming primary election. Sketchy. Maybe they're onto something, maybe not. The dancer reportedly works at the nearby Deja Vu Showgirls Strip Club. Oh, deja vu. Yeah, we've got one of those here. Sure do. One of the best athletes Nick and I have ever seen in person works there. I used to spend some time over at that club, which my dad used to call deja vu. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I remember as a young man, you know, spending time in that area. I grew up in Minneapolis, and we'd spend some time over there thinking someday I'll be able to go in there. (laughs) Do they still have the sign that says, like, hundreds of beautiful girls and one ugly one? Yes. Yeah. That's still up there? (laughs) Uh, Where the hell you guys going tonight? You going over to that deja vu? 
<laughs> a Florida woman was arrested after stealing an ambulance from a children's hospital and leading deputies on a wild chase through the streets of Fort Myers. They tracked the 30-year-old via the emergency vehicle's GPS system to a nearby gas station, but she fled. This ambulance is all over the road, running red lights. It's going to end up killing someone. It's recklessly driving crazy, a deputy said in video of the chase. Going in and out of the median, he's all over three lanes. If we can get someone behind him just to walk. As they pursued the ambulance, the woman was swerving. She was banging into curbs, nearly flipping the vehicle over. She pulled over at one point, but when deputies approached, she took off again, oh. turning on the emergency lights. Why would you waste time not having the emergency lights and sirens? Well, yeah, that's was, the yeah. coolest part. She was probably a little overwhelmed at first. Yeah, Josh, she, wasn't forgot. Thinking, she wasn't thinking right. You always seem to forget the little things. Deputies halted their pursuit, but a helicopter continued to track her. When she pulled over again, they arrested her. You could have killed somebody, ma'am. They weren't happy. Then in Nashville, 42-year-old Joshua Dodson jumped out of an ambulance and ran down the highway about 10 a.m. last Thursday. Medics alerted authorities who later located Dotson walking on that highway, sweating profusely and acting erratically. He was making nonsensical statements and appeared as if he might run into the woods or traffic at any moment. Then he told police he'd taken ice and Suboxone, if that's how it's pronounced. Yeah. And, and was... <laughs> uh, uh, I, it's for a... Uh, a lot of recovering addicts take it. Okay, so. well, I'm not laughing at the use of it, just that Ashley jumped right in there and knew exactly the drug. Uh, he was worried people were after him. What's ice? Yeah, I, I, you know what's funny is I made a note to look it up, and I never did. Did you know that you can make fire from ice? What movie, The Edge? Mm -hmm. What year, 1997? Uh, what actor, Anthony Hopkins? And again, a warning. If you drink... Every time they say Charles, you will die by the middle of the movie. <laughs> they, it says that they call uh, crystal meth ice. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah I've heard that. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm gonna, I didn't know that. I'm going to go ahead and go along with it. A Dallas freeway turned into a not-safe-for-work action movie because a half-naked lady started beating on a driver while pulled over on the side of the road and then got taken for a ride. What but, half was naked? The uh, bottom half. Nice. Oh, wait. I don't remember. I forgot. I watched the video on oh, Thursday. I don't know how to react yeah. to this. I'm sorry. It's on 93X, isn't it? Yep. Dot com. Yep. She's beating somebody up yeah. while he's pulled over on the side of the road and she's half naked. Yes. All right. The wild footage is circulating on social media. It begins with a woman standing on the freeway throwing punches at another gal who is sitting in the driver's seat. And the one slinging haymakers happens to be, oh, here we go, not wearing any pants. That's there, right. Yep. I did remember it. That's what I was hoping for. Check out the clip. The nude woman is smacking at the other. Booty cheeks fully out while the guys filming from their own car cheer her on. Booty cheeks? Booty <laughs> cheeks. Gotcha. She's getting some good licks in, too, holding her combatant by the hair and throwing some vicious hooks. A terrible beating, huh? Yeah, it was quite the beating. In Indiana, a woman went full nude for her bare-skinned rampage. Employees at an Indianapolis McDonald's told police a naked woman jumped out of a car and threw two bricks through the restaurant's windows for some unknown reason Jeez. before speeding off. The restaurant said the damage to the windows is estimated to be about $15,000. Police in Nevada said plainclothes officers responding to a fight at a Reno rodeo were unable to immediately get through the scene due to a large crowd. Fight at the rodeo. Now we're talking. Mm -hmm. So is there ever not one? It just seems like a place you're going to find a fight. Yeah. An officer jumped the fence to assist, but unfortunately his holster got caught in the fence as he was coming over, which dislodged his handgun, causing it to fall to the ground where it fired a single round, injuring three people due to debris. Rito police are working to determine if there is a malfunction with the holster or firearm and or any practices need to be addressed. Uh, you know, his new nickname is Cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> Last week was a busy one for men with accidental discharges. An officer accidentally shot through the wall of a Los Angeles Police Department Academy last week. The shooting happened about 7.30 a.m. Monday. LAPD says was handling his department-approved private-purchased gun and had a non-tactical unintentional discharge. Been there. Investigators said the officer was dry-firing his weapon, been there too, when he fired off a round into a nearby wall. They believe the round may have landed around the trees outside the office. However, officers never found that mysterious bullet. On the other side of the country, in Connecticut, a gun store employee accidentally injured himself while handling a pistol last Tuesday. The employee of Lock and Loaded Firearms, cool, 
was handling a firearm that he believed to be unloaded, but spoiler alert, it wasn't. Oh. Unfortunately, he accidentally stigmated his hand in the process. And police in Warren, Ohio, were called to a medical center last week after a man showed up with a gunshot wound to his hand. The victim said he was attempting to clean his newly purchased gun when it accidentally discharged, shooting off the tip of his middle finger. That sucks. Yeah, that would be embarrassing. Kelly on The Office, Mindy Kaling, 45 I love her. (laughs) Very Uh, funny. RoboCop. Peter Weller, 77. Oh, classic. He's the only RoboCop in my uh, book. Agreed. F the others. Schools, uh, summer school starts today for St. Paul, so shout out to all the school bus drivers running their oh. summer routes. I went to summer school. Yeah, same here. How my kids going, my youngest? Well, I mean, I think Ashley and I went to a little bit of a different version of summer school. Yours is disciplinary? Yeah, yeah. well, no, I mean, because oh. we were, I, I mean, I'll speak for myself. Uh, I had to take summer school classes because I was such a terrible student. Ashley, why did you have to take summer school classes? Yeah, I failed uh, failed English. Yeah, there you go. Why is your son, more importantly, my godson, taking summer school classes? He's very dumb. (laughs) Is he really taking them because he's struggling? Uh, Yeah, he's having a couple of issues. Oh, nice. uh, He takes after his mom. Happy belated birthday to (laughs) ex-iron worker, now blind ninja cat Jesus from Joe the Plumber. Make sure uh, my godson, you know, looks to Ashley and myself as inspiration. It, this doesn't mean the end of the road because you're in summer school. No, oh, summer, he's, summer school is fun. Oh, he doesn't think so. He's pretty miserable about it. I, <laughs> I love that. Happy birthday to Bronny James Dio, Jesus, from <laughs> Jabron Lames, Jesus. And wishing another brick in the wall, Jesus, a heck of a birthday as well. That's 93X News. Care 11's Randy Shaver. This guy is beautiful. On the half assed morning show. Set up there again. Ben Intendi gives it a ride for center field. Matt Fearling makes the catch. Oh, they thought it was. And wow, well, they outs. thought there were two out. This is going to be a double play. Oh, my goodness. What a way to end the game. The Tigers win, and the White Sox have yet another play that typifies their season. 2 1 Tigers. Thank you very much. I, I was like, wait a minute, I thought there's, a, there's one out. How there's in the out. world does this happen? Yeah, the Chicago White Sox uh, suck eggs. They lost a the game the other night because their base runner forgot how many friggin' outs there were in the ninth inning. And he just took off running on a pop-up. Thought there were two down. Nice. Sorry, dumbass, only one down. <laughs> they doubled them up at first. They're terrible. We're pulling uh, Randy Shaver and Brad Ryder onto the scene now. Hello, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. The final, final week for Randy Shaver at Care 11 News. Exciting. That is correct. Wow. How many actual off. work days do you have left, Randy Shaver? I'm off today. I work uh, three full days, Tuesday through Thursday, and then Friday is an F-off day. Yes, it is. <laughs> Good for you, man. See, this Are you on the air Friday, though? It's Friday your last Friday, broadcast? 6 o'clock is my last show. Okay. Oh, Christ. We're going to be, we're not going to be able to watch that live. We're going to be yeah, on our... Yeah, you're on the boat. Yeah, yeah, but I'll have to make sure I set the VCR because I want to see how that plays out. <laughs> um, so, so three actual work days left. Daryl LaMonica. Yeah, pretty much. Jeff George. Yeah. Babe Ruth. Harmon Killebrew. Harmon Killebrew. Randy has been assigning famous athletes jersey numbers along with how many actual work days he has left. The final final is coming up. Yes, sir. From then on out, after Friday, this will be your only gig. <laughs> I'm your bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have guessed that 20-some-odd years ago? <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. That when, this when would we, be when your we first met. Yeah, when we first met, we didn't think you'd last a month. You probably didn't have higher expectations than that either. Yeah, I wasn't sure I'd last a month. But now, after twenty, however many years it's been, twenty-five, whatever oh, it's been, twenty plus, easy. After Friday, this will be your only gig. When people say, "What do you do for a living?" You have. <laughs> yeah, that's sweet. You that's have funny. to directly say, I yes. work for the 93X Half-Ass Morning Show. God, that's kind of <laughs> scary to think about. You've tried to avoid it. You never, ever thought you'd have to have this, you know, how do I say this, wow, Josh? When you, when you put it that way, yeah, that's a little frightening. <laughs> now he's thinking about going back to work. No, I'm not thinking about doing that. <laughs> Who would have thought you'd have to 
credit this building, this company, this this radio show as right. your your uh, your living. Right. We're going to have to cut a new open for this show because, you know, they say a care 11's Randy Shaver. You have to cut a new open. We'll cut it up. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure you will. Yeah. Unemployment's Randy Shaver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, once you're done with that joint, you 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 don't longer you no longer want to be associated with those people. So we'll cut that out of there. Care eleven, f them. You guys can do whatever <laughs> what, you'd like to do with the. Open. What'd they ever I'll do for it, you? I'll leave it up to you. Oh wow. Well, we'll be talking about it all week. I'm sure, leading up to your final final. Sure. I think you'll have an after party, one that you're aware of. At uh, least. I'm having a. My family's going to be here. My kids are have got something planned for afterwards so we're having a little private deal so a couple of sea breezes something like that yeah you know i uh, roseanne wanted to know if i wanted to do some sort of a retirement i i don't want a retirement party i don't want any of that stuff so i'm just we're just gonna have a nice quiet private dinner on friday night i understand all that i am kind of upset that you're not having a (laughs) full-blown 10 keg retirement party i bet that would be a blast Nope, not going that route. Also, after Friday, yes, sir. When folks say to you, you meet someone at a at a get together, and folks say to you, "Tell us about your coworkers." You got to bring <laughs> us up, <laughs> as opposed to saying, "Well, Julie Nelson and oh, Belinda yeah. Jensen and right. uh, whoever I'm else." I'm gonna have to learn you got learn about you guys. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is which? That guy, our names, uh-huh. things like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know anything about you. <laughs> We will be your co-workers. This will be your one and only gig. Yes, it will. You know, on our yes, last day, I look forward to seeing your blood alcohol level, Nick. It's gonna, I bet it's going to be up there. I don't really knock them down like I used to, but our final day, oh, you're going to see a 1995 version of me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, exciting. It's going to be F-bombs as he's going out the door. Going to be ugly. And if anyone's ever wondered how you feel about them, they'll find out on that day. <laughs> there, there, there will be no survivors <laughs> on that final day. I've seen that level of drunk where people realize, I didn't know he felt that way. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this guy really hates me. <laughs> Oh, wow. All right, again, we don't want to blow our wad yet. We got all week long to celebrate Randy's final, final, final. Uh, As I was telling folks earlier here, now we all should be watching tonight. Speaking of uh, final finals. Yeah, should be fun. Game seven of the Stanley Cup. Maybe we'll see something that hasn't happened in 82 years or something like that. We've been joking around up and down. My God, the first three games of the series, uh, what little amount of the series all of us have watched, the first three games of the series, I got a good amount of it, and the Florida Panthers just look like a far superior team, a deeper team. We talked about it. The Edmonton Oilers roll about seven guys deep. The Panthers, three and a half lines worth of, they just look like the better overall team. But the last three games have gone to Edmonton, and now the pressure is squarely on Florida's shoulders playing at home. They don't want to be the first team since 1942 to blow a 3-0 deficit in a Stanley Cup final. 3-0 deficits have been overcome four or five times in the, since they went to seven-game series. Four or five times that's been overcome in lesser playoff rounds but not since 42 in the final final. So this is a hell of a deal. Yeah. This and is the last game tonight, right? This is, yeah. this is yeah. the last yep. game. Okay. Brad, that's what the newspaper says, but you never know. <laughs> you never right. know. I did, I did a little math before we came on this morning. It's been 67 days since the wild season ended. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> 67 <laughs> days. Since wow, the wild over season ended, two and we're still playing hockey. And then NHL training camp opens in two weeks. I, and I did that math too. Eighty-five days until training camp opens. <laughs> so we're squarely in the middle of the off season. The last team to overcome a three-zero deficit to win a cup was the nineteen hundred and forty-two Toronto Maple Leafs, and that's the only time any team has ever done it in any major sport in a championship series. So this could be buck wild. Buck could wild. Be. Oh, man. Again, with this effing bit, Josh. Never in my life 
did I think I'd get tired of talking about a pretty lady with massive sweater cannons. It is, but I'm just exhausted by this effing story. It is not how many people are writing about this. Okay, so the Edmonton Oilers fan who's flashed her silos at the playoff game, now it says she signed up with Playboy. Kate is the name she goes by. Playboy posted, catch Kate over at the Playboy Club, whatever that means. And a lot of people are still acting as if they've never seen a topless woman before. <laughs> well, she's kind of gone back and forth, right? At first, like, I don't want this attention. You know, I just did a right. thing, and uh, everybody's right. making a big deal out of it. I don't want the attention. How much are you paying me? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, I'm sure the Good money's uh, yeah. pretty substantial. I mean, I've never been there before. Maybe someone can tell me. Is, is Kate the first woman to ever go topless in public in Edmonton? I don't know. <laughs> but, but, but we're still talking. Now she's going to be on the Playboy Club, whatever that is. Because the magazine is gone, right? Yeah, I think it's only... Oh, on I thought it was the back. Phys- the physical oh, really? magazine? Is it not back? I thought the physical oh, no. magazine disappeared and was back. I thought it was oh. gone. Does yeah, anybody- I did too. No I one knows for sure the answer to that question. We'll have to ask a middle schooler. They'd probably know. <laughs> My God, with this lady. <sighs> but there you go. Go over to the Playboy Club if you can't get enough of the... Playboy relaunched as a digital magazine, but no more hard copies. Oh. So it's not it's not back? No. Okay. Uh-uh. How yeah, many it, it even says your digital destination to interact with the world's most beautiful women. Mm. Each of us dudes has to at least have one Playboy magazine in the house, right? I do. Okay. No. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> no. I have I have the Sable uh copy. Oh, oh, that is no wait a minute. Sable by herself or Sable Tori Wilson? Ooh. Sable by herself, the okay. first one she did. I have both of them. Which, Sable which by is her. Better. Oh, Sable Tori Wilson may be the hottest pictorial that, that Playboy ever did. That's hot stuff. It's incredibly they're so good. Randy Shaver, how many Playboy magazines zero. do you have in the house? Zero. Brad Ryder. Uh, zero. Brad, Brad's more of a penthouse kind of guy. <laughs> Hustler. Um, <laughs> Hawk. Hustler. Do you have any episodes? Hawk. Do you have any Hawk magazine? I, I do remember finding my dad's stash when I was in middle schooler, though. Oh, what, really? What did he have? Uh, he had Playboy and some penthouse. He had some hardcore stuff in wow. there? Oh, penthouse. That was like, uh, like gynecologists used that for school. I, mean, that was so <laughs> <laughs> I remember being shocked when I saw Which penthouse. one? Penthouse. Oh, when you were a kid, you thought that's that's pretty graphic. Oh, I thought that's wow, that's a little much. And then you saw a hustler. That that changed me. Or in, a, in a hawk. Bad way. I never saw a hawk. Oh, dude, they were aggressive. My uncle had so many Playboys. He used it as furniture. He had stacks upon stacks of, of Playboys. Wapple zero Playboys. Yeah, none. I mean, did you guys? I'm sorry. Don't get me wrong. Um, after a certain point in life, Playboy becomes kind of monotonous. It does, especially when you discover magazines like Hustler and Hawk. Um, but I just thought every guy has at least a one or two saved copies of their favorite. So, Dana, you have one? Yeah, just the one. That's it? Mm-hmm. Wapo, Josh, you have nothing? Nothing. You know, I, I got like, I don't know, I got like a, a hundred or so. Can I borrow one? Well, which one do you want to borrow? <laughs> don't return know. it after you're done with yeah. it. I, I wouldn't touch it after you're done looking at it. Well, along those lines, so in, uh, God, I'm trying, maybe no it was way. my freshman year of high school or you something. You can have it, keep it. No, you can, you can give it back to me. I yeah. trust WAP. Go ahead, Josh. So really? Fre- freshman or sophomore year of high school, there was one that kind of got passed around, right? Mm-hmm. And it made it to my house. And this is how you really get cool in your school. When your mom finds it and destroys the one that everyone had been sharing, and the next guy and the oh. next guy in line certainly don't appreciate it. Your that. mother did that for you? She did, yeah. She destroyed your Playboy magazine. Yeah, well, not even mine. Like I said, oh, it was right. passed around. That, that, that is uh, tough to come back from. How old of a guy were you? A uh, freshman or sophomore. Oh, that's not right. You were 15 or 16 years old? 14 or 15. Mom yeah. needs to mind her business at that point. <laughs> it's well, a it's Playboy. mom's house. For Christ's sake. Uh, which one do you want to borrow, Wapple? Name a famous hot lady, uh, and it would help if it was, you know, oh in the 90s and 2000s. That, that, that was when I was getting Playboy. Name a hot lady. I'll tell you if I, I if I think I have her. Uh... I'm honestly just blanking. I, I don't even know who did Playboy. Okay, fair enough. Did well, um, when Next time you're at the house, I'll bring you into the room and you can see them all. Okay. Mm-hmm. Did Pam Anderson ever do Playboy? Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, probably multiple times. Uh, Dana says yes. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't remember. 
Well, why? What do you mean? Is, oh, were you joking? Uh, of yeah. course. Oh, 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 I don't know. Did you? She's, been in some, she's got to set a record. Yeah. Her and Scott Bale have to set a record oh. for Playboy magazine. Okay. I guess I, I don't think I have any with Pam Anderson. I don't know. I, did, I wasn't really a... She, I wasn't really chasing Pam back in those days. Oh, really? Not really. I mean, she's quite attractive. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be like a cool bonding moment for us. Well, I got all the wrestler ladies. (laughs) I got all the wrestler ladies. They'll be bonding, all right. (laughs) 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 Yeah. yeah. Did did Stacy Keebler ever do one? Mm, Doesn't sound familiar. I don't think so. Oh, she is a hot mama. Dang it! Oh, yeah. I (laughs) don't think she. Oh, Jamie Lee Presley says social anxiety. Yeah, Jesus. that's a good one. Ooh. Do you have that one? Yes, I do. I do. Some of them I remember. Jenny McCarthy? Yes. Carmen Electra? Yes. Lindsay Lohan? Yes. She Ooh. was in Playboy? I yeah. did not know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Tara Reid? Yes. I think you uh, were Thanks to a listener. One. Thanks yeah. to a listener, yeah. What? Vanna White was in Playboy? I believe I have <laughs> no that one. Way. I Is believe I do. Yeah, uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. What about Anna Nicole Smith? Ye- Wasn't that like a yeah. major cover one? Yeah, she was big time there in yeah. the late late 1980s. Oh, look at this. I got a damn text message from the friggin' wife. She always... Uh-oh. <laughs> Again, in trouble we're, now. we're in trouble. What are you kidding me? I'm not a You're punk like you, Randy. Now. Uh, <laughs> didn't last week, Josh, didn't I say that I want to take the show back from my friggin' wife? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> she, she wants to be a part of this all. So. She says, what room are these filth rags kept in? (laughs) (laughs) Well, the filth rag room. You have a whole room dedicated to it. None of your business. None of your damn business. Filth rags. Well, ever get back to us. Like, who would you, if you were to open a Playboy magazine, what would you find in there? Out of curiosity. What What does she think you'd find in a Playboy magazine if you were to open one of those up? Oh, yeah. What do you think is in there? Get back to us on that. If you can't leave us alone. (laughs) All right. Playboy magazine. Those are good times. Good times. Brad, oh, remember? yeah, the Carmen Electra one. Oh, that one yeah. was good, too. That's a yeah. very good one. Yeah. yeah, I think I would want that one. But you know who I think was the... Okay, I just got done saying... Uh, I'll get there. Sable and uh, Tori Wilson, maybe the hottest they ever had. There was... But I... I, I there was one lady... She was an English model. I'm going to need help from the folks here on the text machine. She was an English model. I believe she had one little, you know, like share or, uh, or, or carrot top. She had like a singular, uh, <laughs> singular celebrity name. I could be wrong. Huh. English model, early 2000s, wildly top heavy. If that, I, I, there's no way I'll come up with her name. But our listeners are brilliant, and they always seem to figure out where we're trying to go. English model, early 2000s. No idea. Was it Jordan? Yes, it yes. was. How the hell did you know I, that? I found the, the Playboy right here. It's I've on never, eBay. I've never six, heard of her. Six she, bucks. She just went by the name of Jordan. She is a very attractive. That is... I think she was the hottest woman to ever find herself up there in uh, in the pages of Playboy magazine. Yeah, British model Jordan. Yes. Katie Price is her name. Her there real name is Katie Price? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. September of 2002. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to look for that one this afternoon in my, what, what did she call it again? Filth room or whatever yeah. she called it? <laughs> yes, in the filth room. Did she get back to us as to what you might find in the pages? No, 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 not yet. I'd like to know. Dennis, Dennis Rodman became cool to me when he started dating Carmen Electra. Yes. I think, yeah, yeah, a lot of people felt that way. He was awful cool there for about 10 minutes. Yeah, I just sent it to you, Josh. Uh, see if Nick, if that's the right one. Well, what are we, what are we looking for? Over here. Oh, wieners. No, I'm I'm sure. Send me a picture, Wapple, of of this Jordan. I'm sure you're right. Randy All right. Shaver, you're the uh, cover model of the Star Tribune today. Did you know that? Oh, that's I'm, awesome. I'm the what model? The cover model of the StarTribune.com. I'm the cover model of the there's Star There's a picture oh, of you. There I am. And there's an article on Randy Shaver. On his retirement, or, yeah. or you're in trouble with the law? Oh, my God. They got me driving a golf cart. <laughs> they that's do. That's a very scary thing. <laughs> Yeah, right do, there. Do you mention do you mention this show at all in that article? 
I'm not sure. Oh, of course you don't. Well, let's see. But I like haven't... we said, you'll be forced to soon enough. Forced to. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'd have, I haven't. I'm not going to read it right now because we're on the air. But well, that's yeah. kind of fun. There's an article oh. about Randy in the Star Tribune. Yeah, he's, oh. co- he's the cover. I mean, he's right there at the top. They yeah, in, right they, there. They interviewed you a couple weeks ago or something. Um, yeah, Neil Justin came out to the golf event. And, oh yeah, uh, rode in the cart with me for a couple hours. Well, Our boss is quoted in the article. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm skipping sorry. it right now. Uh, oh, Joe yeah. Mauer is prominently featured in it too. Oh yeah, yeah. you mentioned 93X. Mm-hmm. Cool. Our boss is meant. Who who are you yeah. referring to? Derek. He gave some quotes to the article. He did. Yeah. Well, what did he say? God. He says Randy is really like our cool uncle. It says grandpa, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uncle. His presence certainly brings us some gravitas. What is that? He really can give or take a joke with the best of us. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious! What if, what How many of your listeners use the word gravitas? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. wow! I saw that word in the sentence. And I was kind of reading ahead. I'm like, I'm not positive. I know how to pronounce this. <laughs> uh, oh, What's the guy's name? Neil. Uh, Neil Justin. Neil, yeah. just call us. What are you talking to the friggin' boss for? <laughs> we know the guy way better than the stupid boss. Oh man! Oh, with- the, I like the last line of the story. Your your wife Roseanne says, "Quote: He's a cat with nine lives." Or a cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mentioned pickleball in here. What a nice article wow. they've got. That's, oh, that's great. I can't wait to read it. Wampo, send me the pictures of that Jordan gal. I did. You did? Yeah. Uh, look at your phone. My phone? Oh, my phone. Mm-hmm. Oh, don't put it on his phone. <laughs> I don't Why not? See, now he's no- not going to know how to use it. There's nothing yes. on my phone, Wampo. What? Except for antagonistic messages from my friggin' wife. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Try it again. Uh, more hockey stuff here real quick. Hey, Darby Hendrickson's heading off to Nashville yeah. to work as an assistant coach for Andrew Brunette. Oh, that's Good cool. Him. Good for him. Andrew Brunette coaches the Preds. Todd Richards is down there, too, and now Darby. Oh, And we want to uh, send well wishes to uh, Stefan Veilloux, former wild player Stefan Veilloux. I understand he got in a car wreck a few days ago and he's in the hospital. Yeah. Got some real problems yeah, going. Uh, good. Oh boy, that's not good. Severe, uh, how do you say this? Uh, fractured vertebrae. Oh my. Um, yeah. Uh, get well soon, Stefan Veilloux. Your name still comes up on this program. Uh, he's coaching hockey here in town and he works for the uh, Tampa Bay uh, Lightning, I believe. Get well soon, Stefan Veilloux. Terrible car wreck. That sucks. Wow. Wow. It sucks I a know lot. What that, I know what that's like. Yeah, you yeah. do. Yeah. Definitely do. You friggin' do. Oh, here's the pictures from Wample. Let me see. That's her. My <laughs> damn. Isn't that good? <laughs> when you look, Josh, did you see this yet? Yeah, he sent him to me. Hottest woman that was ever featured in Playboy magazine. I don't so? care who you are. There's a lot of good looking girls in there. I don't care who you are. She was the one. You weren't lying about being top heavy either. A word? Yep. He doesn't lie about women's bodies, all right? <laughs> Jesus. I wonder what ever happened to her. She probably ended up marrying some one of the Hardy Boys. Or what's that band oh, that again? Oh, that would be uh, sweet. The uh, Hardy Boys. What's the band? The, the Brothers? The Hansons? Uh, no, not the Hansons. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Hardy Brothers, whatever. Uh, they're all English. They all have a lot of hair uh, gel. Are you talking about the Bee Gees? What? No. Oh, one no, Direction? No. Uh, no, no. They're brothers. Oh. They're brothers. Not the Bee Gees is a good guess, but this, she's from the mm. year 2002, not 1979. She's probably married to one of those brothers. Oasis? No, no. Yeah. Good guess, though. They get a lot of hair gel. They dance around. Hair They're gel. brothers. <laughs> dance around. Yeah. Wow. Mm. The Beach Boys? No, the from Beach two, Boys? 2002. I don't know. I don't know. Dates. Wouldn't it be nice if we were older and we wouldn't have to wait so long? The Jonas Brothers. That's the one. She probably <laughs> married one of the Jonas Brothers. Thank you, Park and Rec Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> they're British? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Wow, no, they're not? I thought no. they were American. Oh, they I are. thought they were. I guess you don't even give us a good clue. <laughs> I, I said dancing and hair gel and they're <laughs> brothers. But you what said the British. No. You said oh, no. oh, well, I thought they yeah. were British. No, no, they're oh, American. Man. What a ride that was. <laughs> yeah, what are you yelling at us for? Because you guys are supposed to help me with this. Wapple was right on top of the Jordan lady. I thought you could... Well, but you said British, you know, so that kind of threw us off. Maybe they're of English descent from generations ago. So you're right again. <laughs> yeah. I'm right again. The Twins uh, got what they wanted out of their starting pitching the last couple of days, huh? 
Yeah, last night or yesterday afternoon, I mean, Pablo, that's that's vintage Pablo from last year. Mm-hmm. That's actually Sonny Gray from last year. Pablo was great yesterday. They beat the Athletics 3-0, 3-0. They win this series. Bailey Ober pitched his first career complete game on Saturday. Again, can they just play Oakland? Can they just I know. scratch yeah. the rest of the schedule and just play Oakland? <laughs> See, the rest of this trip gets a little dicier. But oh, man. Yeah. What the hell is going on now? So, the only run the boys needed came in the second inning. Byron Buxton hit a 432-foot solo dong out there to left center field. He had an RBI double also in the seventh. Griffin yeah. Jacks gets the save. The game was played in two hours and 11 minutes. Yeah. Just slicker than snot. Get the hell out of Oakland. Yeah. And it was the biggest crowd of the season in, uh, so far for the athletics. 18,000 people. Uh, the gravitas. Uh, yeah, but actually, it's kind of <laughs> impressive too when you think about it. I mean, they are leaving. Yeah. So, and they're not playing as well as they did early on in the season too. But, so, it was pretty funny. They'll hit a home run, and then there's no one around there's the probably ball. Probably no yeah. one. <laughs> it's like 50 <laughs> seats away. Well, everyone knows what that's Those, like if you went to the Metrodome in the 90s. Oh yeah, sure. You hear that clank. No one would even get up and go get the ball back in those days. Those possum in Oakland Coliseum have the place to themselves. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I remember going to those games. I wasn't sprinting across any section to get a Pat Mears home run ball. You know what I mean? (laughs) Wow. Poor Pat Mears. I I like Pat. He didn't hit many home runs. Yeah, those are rare. (laughs) You you might want to run to get one of those. I wasn't chasing down a uh, Rich Becker home run ball. Again, he didn't hit many of those either. Uh, Twins have a day off, then they start a series in Arizona. Uh, Got an update on what happened with that Jordan lady who was in Playboy magazine December of 2000 plus two. I said, I think she's the hottest woman to ever be in Playboy magazine. I I said, maybe she married a Jonas brother. Um, A listener says, she got it on with a soccer player and had his kid. The soccer player tries to deny that it's his kid. Gosh, I'd like to take Uh, credit. I'd take ownership. (laughs) (laughs) Call me daddy. Yeah, that doesn't sound like the kind of life I wished for Jordan all those years ago. Hook up with a soccer player. That's what you get for hanging out in friggin' England. Oh, she was in Sharknado 5. Oh, what was that one called? Uh, Sharknado 5 Global Swarming. Oh. I'll have to look for that. By the way, when uh, Bailey Ober threw his complete game Saturday, he also dumped 10 strikeouts on the Athletics. And he didn't throw many pitches. He only tossed 89 pitches in a complete game. Now, if you look at the list, if these kind of lists thrill any of you, I don't know. But I'm going to fire it at you anyway. Ober's 89 pitches are the fourth fewest pitches ever thrown in a complete game 10 strikeout performance. You see what I mean? How? Yeah, that's that's yeah. really hard to do because if you're striking out ten, you're throwing a de- decent amount of pitchers pitches to those ten. Right. Yeah, really. A guy back in 1971 had a ten strikeout complete game, and it only took him 86 pitches. And you got guys like David Cohn, Jim Bunning, yeah. Bailey Ober, and Dave Steeb are on the list. That's an interesting list. It is. It is. Because they're, I mean, I'm not, I, I don't know if any of those guys reached like certain milestones in their career, right? I mean, like, uh, well, Dave Steeb and David yeah. Cohn, um, where did I put that? Yeah, list? but they're not, but they're not Hall of Fame no. pitchers, and they're wow. not, you know, I don't know if they reached X amount of wins to put them in a certain category, but they were very good. At, in their time. David Cohn's sure. not a Hall of Famer? I mean, he I was, he was I wonderful. Think, I don't think so. Okay. Dave Steeb was dominant in the 80s for a stretch of time. He was dominant. But yeah, I don't no, know that he's he a Hall the, of Famer or not. Does, does not have the numbers. Okay. But, I mean, that just shows you the beauty of the game, right? Sometimes yeah. guys that you have no clue would ever be able to do what they, you know, could throw a 10 strikeout, 85 pitch performance it can happen at any time with any player in major league baseball Mm. some some the probability is higher for sure but it can happen at any time i'll be damned uh i've been waiting for this all baseball season over the weekend 
the Colorado Rockies walked off the Washington Nationals by way of a bases loaded pitch clock violation. <laughs> I saw that. The pitch clock violation is going to end the game. Jake Cave scores. Rockies win it eight to seven. Finnegan doesn't even argue; just walks off. Can you imagine the excitement of seeing a win like that in oh, person? Oh man, a walk off. <laughs> Bases loaded, pitch clock violation. I think I'd storm the field. Yeah, you say the newspaper clippings the next day. I'd be screaming, the Rockies win. The Rockies win. So do they dump Gatorade on the umpire in that situation? <laughs> <laughs> Good question, Brad Ryder. Oh. I just looked it up. Over at 89 pitches, 70 strikes. Ober, you're back to Ober. I'm yeah, sorry, no, 89 just, pitches, sorry, just 70 strikes. 70 he strikes. Threw, he only threw 19 balls the entire game. Mm. There you go. Uh, I said earlier, I don't know what it's going to take to kill John Force. The dude is too tough to break. He was in a terrible crash at yesterday's NHRA drag race in Virginia. I mean, you only see a few of these. I mean, uh, a year. Uh, he was taken off to the hospital. hes I think he's going to be just fine from what I understand. His funny car popped like a damn M80. Oh, cup bluey. John Force just blew the thing up and slammed into the wall at the top end of the racetrack. 302 miles an hour banging into the walls. John's car starts moving around. Cobb Bluey banks it off of the right wall, and then the real big hit in my eye looked like when he came back across. That is a big-time explosion for a guy that's had a lot of big-time explosions. John Force has been through some very, very wild rides in his career. I'm going to put that one in the top three or four. Mm. By the time he was pinballing off the left and right lane dividers, his vehicle was a trash heap. Yeah. I don't know how he's alive. I don't, no, either. I don't either. That was <laughs> crazy. He appeared to be all there when the rescue team pulled his carcass out of the vehicle. And like I said, they took him to the hospital just for precautionary reasons. And from what I understand, he's doing okay. He won the race. But he is 75 years old and still going. What did he end up with? 302 miles an hour yesterday when that car popped, when that car gave way. Mm. I haven't always been the biggest fan of John Force. I, I've had my... As an NHRA fan, I've had my, my issues with, with the guy, but you can't uh, question his friggin' toughness. My God. I would, I would instantly ask for a live microphone so I could announce my retirement. <laughs> I don't care if I was a rookie in the game. If that happened to me, that's crazy. You've always had a nice thing to say about his daughters, that's for sure. Oh, Ooh. baby. Oh. We've had them on before. Nice couple yeah. of women. Brittany and Courtney. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I've mentioned before, uh, today's pro athletes are different. They're a much more sensitive crowd than they used to be. Fragile egos. If one person says one bad thing about them, they remember it forever. And they always want to push the idea that they're underdogs. <laughs> that, that's the part that really aggravates me. Even if they play on the most stacked team in the league, or even if it's obvious that they are tremendously talented, they want to push the narrative that nobody believed in them, right? See a lot of that these days. So the Boston Celtics had their silly uh, victory parade Friday. They had victory cigars made for their championship parade, and each cigar contained the words of those who doubted them. Oh, my God. (laughs) The dramatics. Can you, I mean, what, what, what has happened to today's athlete? Why? Why are they so sensitive? Oh, my God, they doubted us. We have to, and they bring it up. Nobody believed in, you know, this guy said this, and this guy said that. Grow up. I'm so tired of this being pushed on us. And this is the ultimate, I mean, come on. They had someone take the time to etch the words of those who doubted them into their victory cigar. (laughs) Wow. How petty and silly can you be? That is elaborate. There, there weren't a whole lot of people in my mind who felt that way. Exactly. About them. Yeah, weren't they the favorites going into the season? Yeah. Yes. They yeah. had to look hard to find. It's just so silly. It's probably some tweet from some dude who has like nine followers. Right. 
What do you want? You got your trophy. You're the champions of the world. You got a parade. You'll get a bonus. You got all the ass a guy could handle. Do you want each of these people to approach you and apologize to you? I just don't get it. At the parade, by the way, Sam Hauser, player for the Celtics. Uh, maybe you're not familiar. Three-point no, shooter, shooter, good yeah. defender. Yep. Uh, Sam Hauser. Uh, he had apparently a puke and rally moment during the championship parade. <laughs> he sure did. It looked like they were prepared, though. They, they did. They're traveling along in the parade, as you might imagine. Uh, he was kind of, you know, he, there's Hauser in the vehicle, whatever, and he's, he's pumping his fist with the crowd. And then he... He suddenly doubles over, and it, it looked like he splashed into an empty beer cooler. Oh, I thought it was a garbage can. Oh, well, whatever. What looked, I yeah. thought they just had like a barf garbage can oh, on board. Yeah, what, he, had, he had something to puke into. Uh, he popped right back up. So, Puke and rally? Mm, never Anyone? been able to do it. Anyone got any stories? No. If Usually, I throw up, I'm down. Me too. <laughs> that's, I realize that's my body telling me just go home. Yep, go to bed. I remember many years. Depends on your age, right? Oh, of course. (laughs) Of course. Yeah, when you're 18. Age and circumstance. Yeah. Yeah, now it's a shart and rally. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) You reach a certain age, it changes. There's no rally with that. No. (laughs) The one time I sharted. You're likely going to shut things down at that point. (laughs) Many, many years ago, of course, when I was, you know, 21, hanging out at St. Cloud State. It was one of those big daytime parties. I don't know what the event was. Who cares? But it was this, uh, let's drink all day. You know, of course, you did that anyway. But this was like a, a, some kind of major event where everyone had to meet at the bars at 10 a.m. or whatever. So, I don't know, 3, 4 in the afternoon, I see my buddy Ricketts. Ricketts is sitting at the bar. And I walk up to Ricketts and I said, what's going on, man? And he said, hey, man, I'm having a great time. I said, dude, you smell like you just puked. And Ricketts said, that's because I did. <laughs> <laughs> But he was going after it again. Okay, here we go. The Olympics are coming up, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We got another one of these here stories as we head towards another set of Summer Olympic Games. Now, if I remember right, tell me if I'm wrong. Last Summer Olympics, or maybe it was the one prior to that. I don't quite remember. There was talk that the outdoor swimming events weren't safe for the athletes because the bodies of water being used for these events were filled with human turds. Wasn't that last Summer Olympics? Maybe it was two. Uh, where were they last Summer Olympics? Uh, I think you're right. I remember seeing stories. Brazil? I think it was in Brazil. Okay, then that yeah. was last Summer Olympics. Do you remember that conversation? Yes. yes. All the bodies of water where they're going to have these outdoors, they're all filled with diarrhea. But they went ahead anyway. I remember yes. watching a couple of the events, and we were like, oh, no. You know what I mean? Because mm. oh. they're swimming in this yellow-brown water, and it was just... So there's a sta- same story going around Paris for this upcoming Olympics. Folks running things over there are scurrying around trying to clean the water in a river called the Seine, I believe is how you say it. Apparently the Seine is more or less a gas station toilet. And nobody's sure if they can dip net all of the turd logs out of there in time for <laughs> Olympic athletes to go swimming around in it. <laughs> Let's get a little late in the game here, too. Do you have a dip net, Randy? I do not. And a boat with an outboard motor, because they might need us to... (laughs) Gross. Wow. So keep an eye on that story heading into the Olympics. We're reading that they're trying to get all the turd logs up and out of this river so they can have a breaststroke uh, competition or whatever. I don't think they're actually going to be swimming. Like, is is it not part of... The triathlon. The triathlon, yeah. yeah, and events like that. Yeah. yeah. Breaststroke, whatever, backstroke, I don't know what they do, but they don't want oh. poop going into the mouths of the... <laughs> 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 and it some French, natural. <laughs> some French guys in the bleachers going, yeah, that's mine right there. That's, <laughs> that was mine. The camera gets a zoomed-in shot. <laughs> and the guy just, oh, yeah. whoa. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> And uh, also, I think I remember this story. Yeah, I think I've heard this story before. We're going to take you back to the 1904 Summer Olympic Games, everybody. Um, Maybe some of you have heard this story, too. Um, So 120 years ago, 
at their Summer Olympics in, uh, they had it at uh, in St. Louis, Missouri. And there was a men's marathon. They held the men's marathon. And there were some pretty interesting things that happened during the 1904 Summer Olympics men's marathon. Okay? And this is so funny to read. It's, it's, it all sounds so prehistoric. It's amazing how different things are now. I guess they ran this during the hottest time of the day on some dusty roads. Well, that's probably the only kind of roads you had in 1904. Hot day, dusty roads, little to no water for the runners. The only water stations were at mile 6 and mile 12 of the 24-mile race. Is that, that's probably not going to cut it, right, when you're running a marathon? No. Mm -mm. no. But back those in last, those, they, they, miles are be pesky. Yeah. They, they don't care if you drop dead. 32 dudes started the race, only 14 finished. Wow. The track had not been cleared. There were uh, runners who had to dodge trains and, uh, you know, wagons, you know, and people walking their dogs and to run around that. An American named Frederick Lors was originally declared the winner, but was later disqualified when folks found out he actually hitched a ride in a cart for part of the race. <laughs> I get it. That's a awesome. Cart, like, a, like a horse-drawn cart? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm picturing. Yeah. He sat up on a cart, got a... Uh, the real winner ended up being a guy named Thomas Hicks, also an American, uh, who was fainting and hallucinating near the finish line because of a side effect. Well, of course, he ran 24 miles. But also, it says here he was given brandy, raw eggs, and a drug called Strike Nine, which is used typically for killing small rats and birds. <laughs> Only way to start your day. <laughs> So at first, when I read when he was he was given strike nine, I, it made me think that he was tricked into it, like someone was trying to kill him. But that wasn't the case. Remember, it was 1904. Nobody knew what they were doing back then. So his trainers or whatever thought brandy, raw eggs, and strychnine, strike nine, whatever the hell it is, strychnine would help him win the race. In the end, it almost killed him. He uh, passed out a few different times during the race. Does this sound fair? His team of handlers lifted up his unconscious carcass and carried him across the finish line. Well, that doesn't count. <laughs> All right, I guess it counted back in those days. And uh, one more note from the 1904 Summer Olympics men's marathon. There was one other guy from Cuba who was coming to town to ring to run the race. Um, he had to hitchhike to St. Louis after he lost all of his money gambling in New Orleans on his way to St. Louis. <laughs> nice one. Mm -hmm. He got to the marathon just in time, wearing street clothes. He cut off his pant legs to make them into shorts. He hadn't eaten in 40 hours <laughs> before the uh, marathon started. 40 hours. He stole peaches from some spectators. Later, he stopped at an orchard and ate some apples along the way that turned out to be rotten, and he got a severe case of lightning-fast diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> but he still managed to finish fourth. That's impressive. The 1904 Olympic men's marathon. Oh, so he finished fourth. He didn't get a medal, even. Nope. nope. That's a hell of a day. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite the marathon. But there was some bronze coloring, I believe, somewhere on his... Uh... <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Protesters at the golf tournament. I saw this. Kind of scary, really. Did everyone? Oh, boy. We've got a, a whole group of protesters here. And they've been tackled on the ground, on the green. Oh, Police have goodness. responded quickly, but we've got, I see four protesters that have been handcuffed. They just came flying down the hill out of the gallery. Protesters at the golf tournament stormed the 18th green while the leaders were lining up their putts, whatever all that means. Uh, these people were uh, spraying smoke and powder. Um, they uh, had smoke bombs. Uh, they were uh, protesting, uh, I don't know, what is it? What, what, what were they protesting? Oil, Oil or something? something to do with that. They wore T-shirts with the words, No Golf on a Dead Planet. Protesting oil or something. I don't know what the hell they were doing. Uh, one of the golfers says, I was scared for my life. I didn't know what the hell was going on. One golfer sure? said, I thought it was a dream. Yeah. Scotty Scheffler, is that how you say the guy's name? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Correct. See, he doesn't like the cops because they arrested him a few weeks ago. Yeah. He hates cops. 
Uh, but he did give him credit. He said it was nice to have the uh, cops to beat those people up a little bit for interrupting the golf tournament. I don't think he said it like that. <laughs> Somebody made a, made a joke about... <laughs> Jesus. I don't think he said any of those things. <laughs> Uh, somebody made a joke about because oh he God. went to prison that you can't run up on him like that because since he's done jail time, oh. They're, oh, they're lucky he didn't sure. have a shiv ready. Yes. He can, he can handle himself. <laughs> well, he thanked the cops. He didn't say, I, maybe he didn't say anything about yeah, beatings right. and things like that. <laughs> I don't oh, think wow. he said that. <laughs> hey, hey, guys. Thanks for the beatings. Mm -hmm. All right, that's enough for me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <what's laughs> it? I think it's enough for all of us, really. <laughs> Day one of Randy's final, final week at CARE 11. I think we're off to a pretty good pretty good start. Sure. What do you think, Brad Ryder? Yeah, I think so. What if this he's was up, your... What he's if the, off today, though, right? You're off today. Off today. I am off a of TV today. Yes. Working again. Give us the days again. Tuesday, what? Go ahead. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday will be full 6 and 10 o'clock shows. Right. And then Friday's just the 6 o'clock and... That's it. Are you going to try to keep it together or are you going to ball like a child? I'm not going to ball like a child. Oh, you oh yes, cry. you are. I think it'll sneak You're up on you. Oh, no, yes, you I, are. Uh, no, it's I okay. Won't. Real men cry, Randy. It's okay. Well, that's good because I, I watched an episode of House over the weekend <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I bawled about four times. Oh, Again with this? You, you still can't yes. keep it together? I, well, pff, this was a tough one. All right. <laughs> Right. We got a nine-year-old presenting with symptoms of cancer. Oh, no. Oh, we don't and like that. Well, why do you no, watch no. programming yeah, like that if you, you can't keep to it yourself? together? Well, it's a good show. And, uh, yeah, yes. I watched that. That was very, very difficult. Very difficult. I like I'm to watch. I'm glad my wife wasn't around to see that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you, you really let it go. Oh, yeah, I texted her and let her know. I'm glad you weren't here. Not, uh, just because she wouldn't have been able to handle the episode <laughs> and then just to see how I handled that episode. <laughs> All right, well. We got, like I said, we got all week to uh, bust Randy's balls about the damn uh, final, final. Oh, yeah, and the, and the beauty of it is, you know, you guys have your big cruise on Friday, and yeah. then you're then we're off for a week. We are, so, yeah. so we have a chance to kind of like let it, like, you know, let it breathe, let it breathe a little bit, and we could send you some flashcards so you can get to know us. When <laughs> <you're only laughs> Here are some waffle fun facts. Like same <laughs> clue. Yeah, a little picture so you know who's who. It's like a baseball this. card. Hey, Cubby, can I call the cops on my friggin' wife for uh, invasion of privacy? <laughs> oh, did she, uh, did she find it? Did she find she found him. doing a search? Remember this uh, from a half hour ago? Um, we were talking about Playboy magazines, and I got a pile of them from back in the 90s and 2000s. I kept all the hot ones. I have thrown away some of them, but I kept all the, ooh, the girls of the Big Ten. Do you oh, remember, yeah. I remember yeah. watching the, uh, looking at the, anyway, so I said, I got a pile of these. I got them, I got them stashed away, Summers. And uh, the wife uh, sent me a picture. She found the, the cabinet that I keep oh, them in. No. Oh, yeah. And she texted, aha, search and seizure. You, you know, if she had a sense of humor, she just wouldn't have said anything, and she just would have replaced that stack with a stack of play girls. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> she went looking around, uh, and this is in a pretty far away nook and cranny of the house that we currently share. That's hilarious that she didn't know that was there. And now <laughs> no, she why would she? It's none of her damn business. She found the cabinet I keep them in, wrote a text that says, aha, and then also a text that says, gross. <laughs> <laughs> well, she doesn't like whores. She's made it very clear she is not a fan of whores. Quick message for the friggin' wife before we say goodbye to uh, Randy Shaver and Brad Ryder. I'll show you gross. <laughs> <laughs> God. I'll show you gross. Uh, is there one in there that you just prefer she doesn't look at a no, particular magazine? No, no. They're, they're all wonderful Playboys. Like, I hope she doesn't see this one. No, it's all Playboy. I mean, Playboy is pretty straight. You know what I mean? Was it Playboy or Maxim or FHM? Which one did, like, the girls of Home Depot, the girls of Walmart? Remember, I don't that remember. Like a, that was a big deal for a little I don't while. remember. No, she, these are all Playboys. I mean, it's not like I got a... Well, maybe there's some hustlers in there. No, she can look at them all she wants. I hope there's hustlers in there because that was a Christmas gift uh, yeah. for you many, many years I ago. I mean, I, I, oh, she's, she started it now. I'm going to go through all her stuff now. <laughs> oh, God. And I'm going to bring, I'm gonna bring <laughs> in to work. I'm going to go through her stuff. A lot, of, a lot of life changes when we come back from uh, vacation. Randy yeah. won't be working and Nick will be divorced. When, when she's not looking, I'm going to go through her stuff and bring the items into the radio station to talk about them. Oh, no, that'd be cool. That'd be fun. That. That's what I'm going to do. we got to go. Not, you're not going to do that. Bye, Randy and Brad. Goodbye. We'll see you guys. We'll be back in a few minutes. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show.
Are you ready to beat the heat this summer? Standard Heating and Air Conditioning is here to help you say goodbye to sweltering heat and hello to ultimate comfort. Ashley, what specials do they have going on this month? It is fun, sun, and savings time at Standard Heating and Air with incredible savings on AC units, heat pumps, and combo deals this month to ensure your air quality is up to snuff this summer. Go to standardheating.com for more info or to schedule your appointment today. For the real story behind some of wrestling's biggest moments, it's something to wrestle with Bruce Pritchard and Conrad Thompson, too. We got to talk about the crowd in France. At one point, they sent out an emergency at everyone's phones stating that the decibel level was dangerously high. You know, a few surprises, like singing Randy Orton's song. I was like, there are words to this song? <laughs> <laughs> something to wrestle wherever you listen. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Oh, God dang. Yeah, all right. Welcome back to the program. We've already made it to 834, Cubby. It's by fast, didn't it? It's really gone fast. by. Yeah, it did, actually. Slower than hell, if you ask me. <laughs> I uh, fell asleep through most of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's taken forever. We've been pumping up what a great time our boat party is going to be this Friday. How about a quick uh, ticket dump? Go ahead. Uh, on our Luther Bloomington Kia text line, text DOC, D O C K, text DOC to 651-989-9393 for a shot to win tickets to the half ass morning show boat cruise. We got to get that edited out of there. It says booze. Yeah, we don't want to put that out. There. I don't like that kind of image. Half ass morning show boat cruise. It's this Friday, Stillwater River Boats. Warner's Dock, Maplewood Auto Mall, making this possible. We appreciate that. So, again, text the word D-O-C-K, Dock, to 651-989-9393. If you're planning on screaming and hollering and making a scene on the boat, we don't, we don't want you on the boat. We want you to have fun, but keep the noise down. I think that's a reasonable request after keep all these years. the noise down. We had somebody suggest if someone's talking at too loud of a volume, we throw them overboard. (laughs) I like the idea. Well, it does, except somebody, their instinct might be to scream on the way down, and that's even worse. Yeah, Yeah. and and then the splash, too. Mm -hmm. If they scream on the way down, that's going to disturb some people. It could. Yeah, this is your last week to try to join us. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah, if you want to go, I hope you win. It'd be nice. We got to talking a little bit. We did. We got to talking a little bit now about porno mags. That's how we used to do it. Porn magazines. That was it. Maybe an occasional VHS porno movie. If you were lucky. If you were lucky. These days, Christ, you open up your cellular telephone. Wapple, I bet you could find us five different porn genres in under one minute. Oh, yeah. You could holler them out to us. Pegging! And I'd, and I'd ring the bell. <laughs> You'd say, oh, girl. And then I'd ring the bell again. Milf. Milf. These Brunette. days. I wonder who has the most interesting uh, history on their cell phone, their browsing history. The history. I'm going to guess Ashley. Yeah. But, um, it's but, not too interesting, I guess. It's just it's mostly boring. Can just you give us an example? Stuff. Like what? Um. Like what are the last few websites you checked out? Are we talking about... Only porn related or just in general? Yeah, we're uh, talking about porn here. Probably porn. Uh, then it's it's always the same one. Pornhub. That's the go-to. That's your jam? Yeah, and it just like knows by now what you're into. So when you're on the home screen, screen, it'll just give you like recommendations based on what you usually watch. Yeah, mine's a lot of a lot of skirts and uh, lingerie, lingerie. lately. So what do you so you just search skirts Again, and lingerie? It's yeah. 1963 yep. over there on <laughs> Apple's that. poodle skirts. Yep, <laughs> poodle skirts and lingerie. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say I don't think the videos that I watch have much clothing in them, Wapo, But to each their own. What do you search? I, I I like when they they take it off. You know. I like it. Set the mood, and then they take it off. You just sounded like a a very young man. I like it when they get naked. I just liked it when Ashley tried to fool us by saying, to each their own, (laughs) when we know she almost never follows that motto. Well, what do you search, Ashley, then? Um, Probably now it's more like specific women, so like Abella Danger or Angela White. Mm, Hard. 
We were talking about porno mags. And by damn, that's all there was. Here's something for you. A person. Oh, again. They went online to ask advice. Hey, dear Reddit, I need to... Right, okay. That 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 bit. Mm-hmm. A person asked for help online about dealing with a neighbor who loudly masturbates. <laughs> <laughs> who, here, who here is the loudest masturbator? I guess probably you. Yeah, probably you. I, yeah, probably. I mean, it's. are you guys the same? Like, if you don't want to make any noise, you don't have to? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. I... I don't want to. Ashley. I never have. I didn't even. I don't even know if I know how to. Ashley, <laughs> men invented that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we invented that thousands of years ago. So you guys think I'm the loudest masturbator, huh? I don't want to hear anybody. You'd be right. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I make a hell of a lot of noise. <laughs> up, 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 we all up, knew it. Up. There was a kid in my dorm freshman year at St. Cloud State where this is back when you had like a desktop computer still and he had like the big speakers for it with like a subwoofer and everything. Subwoofer? Woofer? (laughs) (laughs) And he would intentionally, as a joke, when he was watching porn, he would crank those speakers so loud you could hear it like three floors up. It was so loud and it was pretty pretty damn funny. Uh, As a joke? Yeah, he just thought it'd be funny. Oh. Well. That's silly. I'd much rather hear someone uh, having sex than masturbating. By far. Yeah, you and me both, Cubby. This is a woman in New York City. She wrote into an online advice column. Okay, I don't know if it was Reddit or what it was. Can I change my answer? I just thought of some people maybe I wouldn't mind listening to. I changed my answer. There are some I was originally thinking a stranger and a man. Of course, of course. You weren't, you didn't think big no. picture. Uh, sure. There's a couple of famous redheads now I'm thinking of that maybe I'd be okay with. You'd like to I'd listen. I'd make an exception because I'm open-minded. You wouldn't mind if they were loud masturbators, say they, they, they lived in the apartment next to you. You wouldn't mind hearing that. Or, or the bordering city from me. Whatever. Sure. Whatever, however much the sound travels, I'll take it. A lady in New York City, she wrote into an online advice column about how her new neighbor in her building loudly masturbates. You can hear it through the thin walls. That, there might be an... It might get to the... No matter who it is, to the point of being annoying. Uh, it's yeah, too I'm much. Sure. I'm trying to pick out whether or not she says it's a he. Let me see here. Okay, here. It is a he. It's a, it's a dude, and he loudly masturbates. And here's what she says. Here's what she supposedly wrote into this advice column. Uh, Help. I live in New York City in a studio apartment with cement walls that apparently are a little too thin. I know it's expected when you share walls with neighbors, you'll hear intimate noises from Tam to Tam. But I have a new neighbor whose solo activities are so vigorous that I can hear... The festivities, she says. I'm going to go in the other room and have some solo activities. <laughs> Vigorous, yeah. That's a, just <laughs> really going for it. Just tearing it loose from its moorings with both hands. They're so vigorous, I can hear the festivities quite regularly. It doesn't bother me personally. She's a very nice lady, this one. But I'm embarrassed for him and wondering if he has any idea he has so little privacy. Should I somehow let him know? She suggests maybe slipping an anonymous note under his door, or do I let him go and uh, mind my own business? Well, if it, it, here's the thing: if it's me, if I'm in this situation, if it's keeping me awake, you know, if 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 it's six, seven o'clock at night, I'm trying to watch a ball game. I can turn the music up on the tele, not the turn the sound up on the television. I can find ways to distract myself. I don't want to embarrass this guy either. But if it's, you know, one, two in the morning and it's waking me up, then I think I do say something to the some bitch. Anyone else have a thought on? I would have to agree. Yeah, if it was messing with my sleep. I think or, I, like, if I had people over, <laughs> that that would bother me. Trying to have a quiet dinner over. with your in-laws or something. <laughs> yeah. And dudes over there just... <laughs> Oh, oh, that's the sound I didn't want to hear. <laughs> I, I, I was even afraid to say that, much less make the noise. I didn't hear anything. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Maybe I tried to outduel him, you know? 
Like, oh, you call that masturbating? Yeah. I'll show you. Two people could play at that game. Yeah. <laughs> like dueling thing. banjos back and forth. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to use two hands today. <laughs> Next thing you know, the both of you are in the back of a cop car. <laughs> you know, I think... Um, Having uh, to decide who won. Well, who won? You know? <laughs> What's that, Cubby? Obviously, that's an embarrassing situation. And I'm trying to think, like, yeah, if it's getting in the way of your life, I could imagine summoning up the courage to ask my wife to go over there and tell them to knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> the anonymous note. That's not a bad idea, right? No, yeah. That's a great idea. Anonymous yeah, if you could, note. You could probably come up with something kind of funny. Yeah. You're cranking pretty loud, bro. That's interesting. I bet, like, the loudest session of uh, most people wouldn't compare to just a regular session from you, Nick. The way you've told us the, the uh, how loud you are. I'm loud. Uh, once the goal is achieved. I'm a loud orgasmer, and I'm not going to apologize for it. You're like a soccer announcer. <laughs> once, once the goal's in there. Dude, it's a beautiful way to put it. I want everybody to know that I got there. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm just a passionate guy. Um, it's just, to me, it's, it is kind of interesting to read. Um, I mean, so the dude is just shh, calling out? I mean, it, oh, you know what I mean? That, that's, that's, that's odd to me. Yeah, you'd be... It really, all jokes aside about my, lar- my loud orgasming, uh, I, I, I don't... Ex- right. I don't expect to hear... Anything but the finish. Do you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I you almost must be wonder some... if the guy's like, that's part of it for me, wants people to hear him. There oh, you go. It's so maybe, be. There you, uh, Christ Almighty, now I got a whole new thought on this. So maybe we're dealing with some kind of sick maniac and you want to, you, maybe, maybe don't, don't get involved in this guy's life at all. Don't, don't put that note under the door. Don't talk to him at the elevator. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't consider that, that he might be a scary maniac. Oh, this is interesting. Um, this is a first-time texter. I used to be an erotica author. I looked up every kink on the planet, so my search history is absolutely out. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool. An erotica author. I went to high school with a guy who ended up being one of those. Have you ever read any of his stuff? No, no, I don't think you can... I don't think it's been widely uh, published. Is that the mm. word you'd use in the mm. business? Delivery driver Sheezus said, speaking of loud orgasmers, I once knew s- someone who would howl. How? No, like, if you so asked Dana, weird. they would woof? <laughs> yeah, some Just woof. Like, <laughs> really? That would make me run away. Again, it's, I mean, if, it, if, it's a, if we're talking loud masturbators, I would always think if, if Josh walked up to me today and said, you know, I've got a neighbor who's a loud masturbator, I would instantly picture a woman because they've got the tools and the toys. Bzz, blah, 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 all that stuff, right? <laughs> I, can't, I, I, I wouldn't initially picture as a man. I wouldn't, sorry. I wouldn't picture a man as being the louder masturbator. I wouldn't either. Right. So it's just, it's a it's an original problem there, which is unfortunate. And I feel like I'm, it's a missed opportunity on my part. I really could have enjoyed that. Insomniac Jesus says, <laughs> "How about just boo him loudly through oh, the wall?" Yeah. yeah, other people are saying uh, applaud yeah. at the end of it, but yeah, booing might shame him. That all sounds great, but after you brought up the uh, the, the the idea that he might be some kind of sick person then maybe I don't want to poke the bear. One of the goofiest stories I ever heard on this subject, this was a gal who used to work in this building, and I don't know how the hell we got on the subject of masturbation, for Christ's sake. We were working a bar gig together. She told me that her younger brother, who was like 13 or 14 at the time, was adamant about his masturbation, meaning he would do it wherever he felt like doing it, and the rest of the family just had to get out of the room or ignore him. Oh, Oh, that scares me. That's what I said. I said That concerns me. Yes. She said you could walk into a room in the house where there's the family computer, and you'd see her brother's back, and he's obviously tearing, and and he would say, and someone would say, oh, come on, Donnie, what are you doing? And he'd say, get out of here. So the parents... I mean, do you know, like... And they would just Had steer? they talked to him? Like, hey, you know, it's, a, it's natural, but go into your room. That, I don't, I mean, I'm, I don't remember. It was a lot of years ago. But th- I said, my God, that story gives me a chill up my spine. Oh, me too. Oh. Fuck, do it. Yeah, that scares me. <laughs> they want to glorify the fact that they're criminals. It's dumb. These guys are dumb. They deserve to be tossed under the jail just for being dumb. The 93X Half-Ass Morning Show. Oh, sure, you know, we're ready to give her. 
and get the hell out of here. You want to want to close this nightmare out, Josh? Uh, talking about someone else's relationship troubles? <laughs> it's better than your own, right? Yeah, this one cracks me up. A woman in New Zealand just sued her boyfriend for not driving her to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> They've been dating for six years. He didn't drive her to the airport. She's taken his ass to court. <laughs> yeah, uh, things tell me have what, taken a turn for the worse. Tell me life. what you think here. Yeah, yeah. if you're going to court, things are not. He said he'd pick her up and take her to the airport, but he didn't show. She missed her flight and a big concert she'd been planning to go to. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, he didn't show up. He also promised to stay at her house and dog sit. He didn't do that either. Hmm. That's not good. What's right his there. deal? So she took him to court and sued for damages, including the cost of a dog sitter and a shuttle to the airport. A judge heard the case, considered whether the agreement was legally binding, but decided not to award her any money. <laughs> Yeah, because she sued him for breach of contract, saying there was a verbal contract between the two of them. Uh, I don't think that's how that works. I certainly understand being pissed about this. Yeah. You never Especially showed up. the dog. I mean, both of them. But yeah, I mean, shoot, your dog could have died. Imagine if you told someone, hey, I need a ride to the airport. I'm going to so Milwaukee. I'm going to see Mr. Big's final. Con- they never show up. You missed the show. Never took care of your dog. So here, keep this in mind. If you ever think about suing a significant other, the judge said that while partners, friends, and colleagues often make social arrangements, they're not legally enforceable unless there's a, quote, act that demonstrates an intention that the person will be bound by their promises. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but your odds are long to sue a friend or a girlfriend, boyfriend, for backing out on a social arrangement. Unless maybe you make them sign a contract. Can you believe <laughs> can you imagine being in a relationship where your significant other is such an unreliable prick that you have to have them sign a contract? Jeez. Yeah, that's usually a sign that things aren't gonna go well. I like they said usually a sign mm. as if it's common. <laughs> ah, that old sign. Dana, I was thinking about the story you told where you had a buddy who would masturbate and crank the volume on the porn so everybody would hear it as a joke. Mm-hmm. You had a buddy that wanted you to know or that he was masturbating. That's what that comes down he to. He wanted the, the entire floor to yeah. know that he was masturbating. Apparently yeah. so. Mm-hmm. That's not right. That concerns me a little bit. Yeah, that's that's not a bit. That's a cry for help or assistance. He did, get, <laughs> he did get put on academic probation. I never found out what happened to him after that. Oh, man. Probably masturbating loudly somewhere. I'd imagine so. By the way, this year, a couple that I brought up where the boyfriend didn't bring the girlfriend to the airport and she sued his ass. Uh, they are. They're no longer together. Can you believe that? Tough the, to come back from a lawsuit being filed against you. <laughs> oh, I'm wow. sure there's people that have, you know, they've reunited their relationship after something like that. One of those really dysfunctional couples that just keeps getting back together over and over and over again. Or they figured it out. A listener point. wants to know if a pinky swear would uh, factor into a courtroom. Oh, that changes everything. Back in the day, that meant something. It did. Or if you become blood brothers. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, that stuff's for life. The blood brother thing is for life. I don't think I ever went through with that bit. The blood brothers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do. I've got a couple blood brothers. Is that right? So you did. The, you cut the palm of your hand and yep. shook hands? Just whole... like in the movies. Wow. What the hell? It's pretty hardcore. Heck, yeah. I hear you. Yeah, All the, right. That's something you can't. You can't uh, break that. Can't breach that. Any, you, any court in the world will honor that. You still pretty tight with these fools? Yeah, absolutely. These are kids from, like, well, they're adults now, but like right. fifth and sixth grade is about when this happened. I'll be damned. I'll be damned. Yeah, that's how I got hepatitis. Mm. <laughs> Before we go, um, Fat Lebowski needs us to settle an argument. Speaking of relationship issues, I don't want there to be a relationship I- uh, issue between he and his wife. Oh, I like this. I-, I like to play this game. So he said, my wife, quote, proudly refers to her self-love sessions as jacking off. I think that's odd. That's our word, and I want to take it back. Who's right? I've always heard, if you're going to use a, a crass term like that, I've always heard jilling off for ladies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ashley, you're the lady on the show. Your thought. Uh, I guess we don't really have that many 
fun different ways to talk about it. Well, what? you have one. I, I've off. never heard that actually used outside of this program. Which one? Jilling, Jilling off? off? Oh, really? So, I would say just like taking care of myself. Okay. So if a girlfriend came up to you and said, yeah, I was... I jacked off. It's <laughs> just so natural. I Toss it. It's so I couldn't stupid. even get through the set. <laughs> so, like, so, would you would, notice that or just be like, okay, you know? I, w- I would notice it in the back of my head. Okay, yeah. so you would. I guess that was a little weird that you used that, but I know what you mean, well, I guess. So what we, we got to give him an answer. What are, we, what are we settling on? Oh, it, it is. He wants to take it back. Is that a man's only oh, thing? Oh, yes. Yeah, it does belong to us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ashley, you agree? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It belongs to you guys. Talk to her. But right, I think we consensus. should have more fun ones. For girls? Yeah. A brainstorm on a Oh, on give a me a night break. Night. There's, there's so many. The, the, there's flicking the bean. The pink mm-hmm. canoe. You, yeah. you well, look it up on the internet. <laughs> internet. I've been sheltered. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. You've been sheltered. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, get well soon to ex-hotel Jesus' dad. He's having some lung surgery today. Spumoni Jesus texts the Luther Bloomington Kia text line to, uh, he wants a cheers to the start of the honeymoon for he and his beautiful wife, Ham Jesus. Oh, yeah, we did one. And then happy birthday to my buddy, Ben. 93X. The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. It is fun, sun, and savings time at Standard Heating and Air with incredible savings on AC units, heat pumps, and combo deals this month to ensure your air quality is up to snuff this summer. Go to standardheating.com for more info or to schedule your appointment today.